Welcome everybody to episode 160 of the China Show. We're glad to have you here on this lovely Friday, and we've got some interesting things to talk about. So maybe we should just saunter right into it with what's new.、And、this is where we、right、<laughs> we talk about what's new with regards to China. And、um, well, what's this? I see some sand. Oh, what does everyone guess? If you guys are watching or perhaps listening, maybe you'll wonder what is buried in the sand. Is it a serpent? Is it a Strange worm, like in Dune. <laughs> what do you think it is? Spice.、Uh, I don't know. I think、More、this、like、is <laughs> what spikes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Pure unrefined <laughs> spikes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So、uh, let's play this little clip for you, and then you <laughs> might be able to figure out. See, so <laughs> those are very sharp spikes. Well, you you can see one's buried in the sand. They pulled another one out of the sand there. Now you know about this area. I, I so not, not only do I know about this area, I know about this problem. Yeah, this so this is a common problem. Should, let's play a little more, and then we'll explain to everyone、sure. what's happening. I mean, I, look at that. I mean, we're literally sitting here watching people dig in the sand of the stick. It's it's archaeology. <laughs> it's archaeology. Modern day archaeology、uh, for humans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not gonna find human remains, guys. Yeah, don't worry about that. I know you'd be all that, over that. that that's, that's yeah, that's my that's your specialty. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What? <laughs> they have the right tool. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they certainly do. Anyway, you can see they're digging, 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 and that's what they're finding. Now, um, let me、uh, fast forward a bit because we don't need to see this long digging process. It's certainly not taking their time. There they go. Okay. okay. You can. Yeah. So. This is a place that's very popular now in China amongst four by four people. Not just this place. Yeah, many places in Inner Mongolia province. Yeah, so this is in Inner Mongolia. Yes,、so、and I have been、yeah. to this specific area. Yeah, and what they do is they have dirt bikers、mm-hmm. that run, like to rip through the sand, and you have four by four people, right? Yeah, and what they do is the locals will put down local bandits, as they're called. Yeah, will put down spikes. Yeah, right, and they'll pop your tire. So that you have to go pay super upmarket rates. They'll hike the price up at a tire shop right down the road. Yeah, and they also charge、um, to come and tow your、Towing? vehicle. Yeah. If you and this is what happened in my area where I lived、yeah. in near Dalatu.、Mm. In Dalatu, what they would do is they would lay these spikes down in the shamo in the desert area,、yeah. right?、Mm-hmm. And so the four by four people would go and have to go to the truck shop repair places right across the street. Yeah, it just happened to be. If you had a motorcycle, oftentimes they'll call locals to come and just steal your motorcycle. Sure. They oh, we'll help you take it and they put it on the truck and they drive away. Sure. Or they'll say, oh,、uh, they'll threaten you with a knife or whatever. It's a bandit area. It's a very lawless area. Sure. And so you have like a we organized crime mixed with like scammers, basically. Yeah, it's like scam scamming going on. And、yeah. so、uh, again, you see these these are videos taken by Chinese people that are pissed off at the locals、yeah. in that area、uh, scamming them. And so、yes. they're like, "Why do we keep getting flat tires?、Yeah. You know what's、yeah. going on? We come out here for some four by four action, and we get flat tires, and then we have to pay exorbitant amounts. See, here they are broken down because of these spikes, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you can see I came out all the way from Liaoning, right? Yeah, you can see his. His plate, right? Yeah. yeah, they are like trying to change tires and things because they drove over these spikes. Like, we want to go use these American trucks, like we saw in the commercials. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like for our die guys.、Yeah. You know, this the the whole sort of four by four scene is kind of new to China. Yeah,、um, probably within the last ten years. Yeah. And it's it's a rich man's game. Oh yeah, it's only that's only, like、uh, yeah. So that's why they get targeted as well because it's、yeah. the rich dudes. They come up there to play in the desert because you know that's something very strange about China is there's they very much lack these kind of places where you can actually go out. Oh yeah, and, and you have to、ride. go to a specific yeah. You have、place. to like go. Provinces away. Yeah, it's like you'd have to travel multiple states. Yeah, this guy went two states away. Yeah, to go here. Because、right. right, you know, I was big into dirt biking. Yeah, there was nowhere I could go dirt biking、nope. in Shenzhen. No, that's why I loved Inner、yeah. Mongolia. Is because I could dirt bike everywhere. Just because it's all open. it's all open. Yeah,、right? it's not developed. The average area in China, you can't do that. No, you can't. I had to go to like a logging area of Zhengcheng, you know, outside Guangzhou, where there was、yeah. a little little like bubble where I could ride around yeah, a bit. Yeah, I remember that. But even that was difficult, and the cops would come arrest, like take your bikes away、yeah. and stuff. So it's tough. So these guys go specifically to these places to go four wheeling. And then the, the locals are setting up these traps. It's kind of interesting. I have another tidbit. Can you pause it on a spike? Just so, yeah,、um, yeah, sure. It, it looks cooler to have like a spike. Okay. Than like a blue red、oh, truck that people see. Yeah, or like people. Or are... guy, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So there's another thing to learn from this, and、mm. I thought about this before the show. It's it's, it's a cultural point we can teach people.、Mm-hmm. In China, when you are in trouble, 
but you are not in your home area,、mm-hmm. you are shit out of luck. Yeah, because China relies on Guanxi. Yes, Guanxi is your connections, and connections are almost always local. Yes, right. Unless yes. you're like a government official or someone that knows people、yeah. all around.、Mm-hmm. So if you're in this area, the locals have way more connections than you do to do anything. Right. The、yeah. cops will even be in on it. So that、yeah. people think, oh, the CCP is all controlling and all this kind of stuff. The cops in a local area will take a local side pretty much over anyone that's、yes. from the outside because they know his uncle's cousin's brother. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So all this organized crime and stuff is super. It's a super big problem because China is so effing corrupt. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. The local police would never back you. You call the police to report this, and they'll they'll extort you because、yeah. they're the friends of the people、yep. that put the spikes in the ground in、yep. the first place. And it turns out that's a that's a local organized crime thing that goes all the way up to the top. Yeah,、right? yeah. So there, you know, oftentimes if I would go somewhere, my parents-in-law would be like, "Don't go to this area because we don't know anyone there."、And、I'm、yeah. like, "I don't care. I'm gonna go wherever I want. We、sure. travel the whole country, right?" Yeah, yeah. But when you're in a local area, for the average Chinese person, that's daunting and scary because they don't know anyone that can help them. Yeah, they will get scammed. There is a lot of crime in China, and people like to delude themselves into thinking there's no crime in China.、Mm-hmm. Very, very crime-heavy country. Yeah,、uh, no reporting of statistics, right? Correct. So when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're kind of out of luck, if, especially if you're like a local that people think they can take advantage of. That's right. And one thing I just have to、uh, give a counterbalance to that is from a lot of our own experiences,、yeah. we've had very good experiences. Yes. When when we've genuinely been in trouble, now it's different. If someone's trying to scam you,、yeah. you're shit out of luck. If someone has、yeah. nefarious intent, you're shit、yeah. out of luck. But、yeah. if you genuinely like need help, like I don't know, you run out of Petrol, gas, yeah, or you, you get a flat tire or something while you're just riding your bike on the road somewhere,、um, because you're a foreigner. And this doesn't happen to local people, by、not、the way. So it's not, I've never seen it. Yeah. But if there's a foreigner, you get a lot of attention. People are like coming. Oh, whoa! What's this foreigner doing here? And then no, they're always、no. very happy to help very、nice. out. Yeah. Very, very hospitable. Gives you a very positive,、um, you know,、uh, feeling about China if you've ever experienced. Oh yeah. That, you know? Anyway, why I think we stayed there so long. Yeah. Yeah.、Right. Exactly. Anyway, anyway it's, it's a cultural insight, though. A lot of people are scared of going anywhere in China, even if they're Chinese. Yeah. Because they don't they don't know anyone there. Yeah.、Right? So anyway, according to this video, there's some stupid amount they charge, like two and a half thousand RMB to come and tow your thing, and they, <laughs> yeah. And they、That's、charge five hundred dollars. Yeah, and they charge one little tow, and like it's, it's just a, right there.、Mm-hmm. Right. And then they charge you for tires and all that stuff.、Walk. Anyway.、Um, This is this another is, cultural insight. This is now. This will look harsh and、yeah. and bad I, if we laugh at this, but it's funny. I just don't know whose side to take here, though. I'm taking the local side because who's going to put up with getting buried in cement? That's pretty epic. I, I take the epic side. Okay, but I also don't like the people that try to extort. Yes, but we don't know the situation. We don't. Well,、uh, from the source of this video, pretty much what's going on here is、um, the village wanted to build a new road here. Yeah. Um, but the, these people that are sitting there in the cement, they sat there because they wanted compensation. They didn't want to let this go ahead until they were paid. For what? I I don't know. You see, that's why it's a bit vague. They might knock down their house. Yeah.、Right? Who knows? Maybe they didn't want a road there. I don't know what the、right. deal is. Maybe they wanted to get paid before they could. Something like that. So、sure. they decided that they just sit there to try and prevent the construction to go ahead. Sure. But rather than prevent the construction from going ahead,、um, they just kind of built the road. And that'll be on an, them. And that'll be an interesting speed bump. <laughs> I mean, like, it's like、oh, sorry just, for the dark humor, but I mean, they're like, just chill it out in the cement, getting you know paved into the road. Yeah, can I devil's advocate this? Yeah, they might have been a victim of forced demolition. Oh, sure. We've seen that happen、sure. for very bad, like, I mean, bad、yeah. situations, right? They, they they could very well be, but you know, there's also that certain demographic that scam people out in the villages. Like this you, is, this you know, with the wedding,、true. you know, with the wedding processions.、Mm-hmm. We we don't have clips of that, but we'll show that to we you. Have, we have them. Yeah, we'll yeah. show that to you maybe next time. But there's this phenomenon in China that when you get married, you get like a convoy of cars, right? So you'll have the all the best men and the bridesmaids and all that will be in these cars, and you have the wedding couple. And in Chinese tradition, like back in the day, you would kind of have to give. Uh, you know, lucky money, red packets to people along the way to your wedding to give you good luck for your wedding. So now what they're doing is when they drive through villages, people are like literally wheeling out people in wheelchairs and stuff to block the road so that they can <laughs> it's like, extort like the, this, like、yeah. speed bumps. Yeah, and they they're like lying on the road and stuff so、That's、that they、horrible. can't drive, and then they go and say, "Give us the you know the lucky money, otherwise you can't pass." Type thing. Sure, so sure. it could be something like that too. Anyway. <laughs> It's、uh, it is what it is, and that's kind of a, a China-only scene, I would say. 
That's. I mean, I'm I'm assuming they peeled them out of there at some point. Oh, you never know. They could have sat there like you know overnight. Yeah, and they're getting like they're basically waiting for it to dry. I mean, yeah, they're they're phoning people and stuff. <laughs> what on earth is this? <laughs> it's one of the little China humor. Okay, so uh, there is a certain aesthetic in China mm-hmm. where this is not doesn't pertain to young people. This is more of a uncles and IEs thing. So like okay. the fifty five plus sure. generation. Sure. They all share videos that they think are funny and clever and interesting. This yeah. is just one that came up on my feed. I thought was quite, quite interesting to watch. Okay, well let's take a look. Um, I put a little sound in it, but not enough. To get it yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> there is this weird thing, and I'm we'll seeing a lot of eyes and uh, and shoe shoes. Yeah, a lot of like that yeah, lost generation. Go back a little bit. Okay, <laughs> we'll I'm, go back a little bit over I'm there. I'm seeing them using this tool to like hyper extend they think it's hilarious what on earth is going on here though he turns into like a band saw or something like a i think he bench. turns into a record oh yeah yeah you're probably right it's so like a record music, yeah right? it's a record yeah do we have any sound so you can hear that oh yeah bit? let's maybe turn that up a little bit yeah. i can't hear anything Wait. i definitely put like a slice oh yeah there's a there's there. a little bit let's just try that again yeah. okay Isn't that yeah, IE music? Yeah. Oh, big time. <laughs> it's such a vibe. Anyway, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, what weird. do you got here? Because I haven't seen these clips yet, by the way. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, it's good, better that way. Yeah, we, 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 way. when we prepare for the show, I do some segments, yep. he does some segments, and then we throw it together last minute by just the way, in time. We're, we're trying to make this more hospitable for um, mm-hmm. listeners. Yeah. Um, so we want to explain what just happened. There was a long-legged beauty singing in a street. Yeah, long-legged as in just... Like as in absurdly yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stretched out to the top of the seat, the top of the sky, right? And the uncle comes along, Uncle Gambe. Uncle Gambe, mm-hmm. which is, by the way, Gambe is what you say. Yes, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Kampai, uncle you know, Gambe mm-hmm. means like an uncle that's an alcoholic who drinks all the time. Because yeah. uncles always make you Gambe with them, like drink with them. But a quick little fun fact for those of you who don't know, the whole Gambe thing, you might be interested. Because you know when you say cheers, it just means like, let's have a drink type yeah, thing. Yeah, try the cup. Gun, Gambe actually means drive a cup. So it yes. means like empty your glass. Yes. So when they go, Gambe, it's not like cheers. It's actually like skull it or whatever yeah. you would say. What is it? Can you put it back on him so people have context when we talk about uncles? Okay, I mean, I mean that's <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, right there, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's a loud bond. What right do you there. say in uh, in in America to like just down it or whatever? We say dry dry the cup. No, you don't say dry <laughs> the cup. You're like dry the cup, boy. We say chug it. Or pound it. Pound it, yeah. Pound or pound, chug it. Pound it. So that would be a better chug, chug, chug. It's yeah. chug. Ch- chug it. I guess. Yeah, chug it. That would be a better. Pound it is also a thing. That can yeah. also mean something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so because yeah, that definitely. Like when you could. make a cake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, cake sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, definitely, definitely, this whole idea that gumbe means cheers is actually not correct because gumbe no. actually just means, it means down chug. it. Chug means you know. Yeah, down it. Put it away. Yeah. You know. Slam it down. Yeah, slam it down. Yeah, Slurp there we it. go. It's not, you know, I think, hatch. I think a lot of people have like this romantic idea of like cheap pals and like, you know, like <laughs> they're like flutes and bay. Gun bay. If you analyze the characters yeah, it's like, of gun bay. And they're these gun like, as in dry. Yeah. The ancient oracle bones <laughs> tell us that dry comes from, you know, like. Yeah, exactly. Bay. And it's like flowing robes yeah. and stuff. It's like, <laughs> it's like, meanwhile, it's this uncle. It's like, gun bay. Oh, this is uncle. He's like, like thrown up everywhere. He's, he's like, like, now I have room in my stomach for more. <laughs> yeah. That's that guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's like taking a whole bottle of Baijiu yeah. and actually swallowing the bottle of glass and all, you know. You know that flute that's playing the background yeah. of the chi pao while yeah, yeah. Like, the oracle was and yeah. then the, the uncle gambe grabs a flute and he breaks it in half and he chugs another <laughs> yeah, one exactly. yeah exactly yeah exactly anyway uh okay we'll play it again let's get it let's he get on with this an alien record <laughs> he's just and he's just i just for some reason i wouldn't even normally share this clip, but for some reason i found that hilarious yeah. anyway mm-hmm. the for the listeners yeah. uncle gambe this uncle strolls in this laoban so he's yeah. wearing like your polo shirt tucked into your yeah you know, your, your dress pants yep. with those fake leather shoes. And he turns into a record. After yeah, and flies. His, his after neck, after extends his neck extends. And, extends. And, yeah, it's just ridiculous. If you're listening, no if you want to know what this looks like and you're listening, go watch this show on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so. Uh, listeners, you're welcome yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got a woman who looks like she's got her head in a microwave so, from behind. I want you. Okay, so mm-hmm. this is one of my favorite accounts on Instagram. Okay, it's called Jay Sharon. Um, okay. It's a husband and a wife. She's, uh, they're both Taiwanese Americans. Okay. Um. So I want, I don't know when this came out, mm-hmm. but I want to see if you find this familiar at all. It's very funny. Okay, let's okay. take a look. Anything you put in front of it using AI technology. 
hammer. Cool, but isn't this just a microwave? Oh, oh wait, oh wait. Please don't touch any buttons. Okay, but how did you build this in one day? We outsourced the software. Outsourced? You know we can't sell it here in the US if it's from- No one will even notice. Look. Basketball. See? Very American. What about this? Deadly weapon. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> a red box? Ew, what's that? Dog food? <laughs> um, uh, let's just stick to more basic things like uh, this thing. Factory. <laughs> <laughs> go back so i want to shout out yeah. they don't need a shot because they're yeah. massive but yeah that's kind of um, funny what does that remind you of sarah ai it does doesn't it yeah it's just it really is i've got it right here yeah, younger and beautiful. for those of you who don't know i know you're probably tired of it if you do know but that what that little clip you just saw sarah ai mm -hmm. younger and beautiful yeah is it they tried to make huawei china's greatest technology company tried to make an ai for a for a show yeah and to they, demonstrate their AI. They didn't have one. So mm. they literally put a Thai woman in a box. This is in Bangkok. Yeah. And it was like, pretend to be an AI. Yeah, with the microphone. Yeah. You know, and they, they literally ridiculous. pretended to make an AI. It was yeah. some Unreal Engine thing. And yeah. It was just a woman talking. Anyway, I thought that was either, either has took inspiration from Sarai AI, mm -hmm. because that clip might have been going around. Sure. Or that came out before. Yeah, either way, it's, uh, it's full of lots of stereotypes, which makes it funny, because stereotypes are funny. Let's Terrible. move on. <laughs> Guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time to do 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 uh, It's time for Athletic Greens. Okay, guys, a word from our sponsors here. Um, we love this product. It's called AG1 yes. and uh, from Athletic Greens, which I take daily. And what it is is it's a delicious drink, which basically contains all the vitamins you'll ever need. So for someone who has a poor diet like myself, it's perfect. Because, I would say uh, it probably has all the vitamins and minerals you need for the day. Yeah, of course. You don't take it once. No, you take it yeah. like daily. Yeah. It's like a drink you have in the yeah. morning and it's... Uh, <laughs> Tastes good, just chug it down and you can feel good about yourself. Like, hey, I did something healthy. Now I don't need to exercise. Uh, and I can eat well, a whole pizza. Well, let's back that up real quick. Let's back that up. <laughs> Obviously That's not. not at all the truth. <laughs> no. So no. what the, but what it does do is make mm -hmm. sure that if you are a person that you know, that does, you know, eat your fruits and vegetables and take your vitamins, you can add this on top of it. But oh, yeah. a lot of us don't do that. I mean, if you actually sit down, I was doing this the other day. Yeah. I was sitting down and trying to document like how many servings of fruits and vegetables I eat per day. Mm. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's a lot and it's not. Mine's you, like zero. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, I'm a person that does eat fruits and vegetables, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not enough, right? So AG1 is fantastic. AG1 yeah. by Athletic Greens is one of the best, most natural things you can do for yourself. It's not expensive. It's an easy, easy antidote to being lazy with your food. Mm -hmm. And it will make you feel better. I but mean, it, you've noticed an energy boost. Uh, absolutely. But not only that, like actual athletes take it. And, yeah. You know, people that are healthy and fit take it too because of its benefits. So, um, yes. It's really yeah, I mean, good don't old. just take like no, don't just take like it if you're us. yeah, if you're if you're like lazy like uh, or you know unhealthy like us. It's not who who it's for. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. Yeah, yeah. it's good. I stuff. was I was saying, don't just take our word for it because we're disgusting. Yeah, take I mean, uh, <laughs> real athletes' <laughs> words for it. But Athletic Greens, uh, it's fantastic. We love it. Yeah. If you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ADV, uh, you'll get a fantastic deal, and you'll really help support the show. So. That's right. And you'll be getting a good product. It's good for your health. So. Um, hold on a second. Okay, you've have got something to, to add? About it. Oh, you do, do you? I do. Um, <clears throat> I have the link. I want to say the link properly. Oh, you want to say the link? Okay, let's do it. You mean the athleticgreens.com forward slash ADV link? Yes. That's on the screen? It is. But I want to say mm -hmm. this. Okay. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, hmm. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply. Oh, yes, that's right. Of, uh... Vitamin D. So mm. it's a vitamin D thing. It comes with like a one year supply of it that yeah, you can I, take. And that's the energy stuff. Right? Yeah, I got it makes, that. Or sorry, immune booster stuff. Yeah, that's right? good. Uh, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's mm -hmm. athleticgreens.com slash ADV. And we want to thank them very much for trusting us and supporting our channel. Absolutely. And now back to the show. So uh, we're going to move on to our main segment here, guys, which, of course, is called Soft Power Hour, where we talk about how China tries to change your mind through all sorts of means, propaganda and whatnot. And you know what? Before we get into the segment, um, China's got a, a, a chip problem, okay? Doritos, and this, <laughs> no, I mean, th this might seem very strange to a lot of people. Um, I'm also curious as to why our background is not moving. Oh, what do you well, know? You it know. started to move. Whoa. Guys... Okay, so... Must have taken some AG1. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, 
it seems almost absurd to think that China does, doesn't have the technology to make microchips. Because yeah. everything is coming from China these days. Every time you buy a piece of electronics, it's coming from China. So you would think, oh, well, obviously they can make the chips that go into these things. But actually they can't. They, they can to a certain degree. Yeah. Very basic level stuff. But when it comes to the high level things like uh, CPUs and GPUs and you know the, the latest technology, China still lacks the ability to create these things. Yeah. And I mean, this is just simply because they didn't have to. Yeah. Okay, for the longest time Why? now, Why bother? there's no need because it takes an incredible amount of research and development and a yeah. lot of technology and a lot of know-how and a lot of money to develop these things. And China just buys that stuff mm -hmm. or licenses it. So, you know, here you are a Chinese factory. You need to create a gizmo. That gizmo needs a little processor in it. That's the brains of the unit. You don't have to buy it. I mean, you don't have to make it. You buy it. Yes. Okay. And then you just stick it in your gizmo. Right. Simple. That's what's been going on for, for the longest time. Um, but now, because of sanctions against China, and also for the longest time now anyway, Xi Jinping has been pushing for self-reliance of China. So he's like, we don't want to buy stuff from the outside world. We want to create everything here. Mm. And in order to do that, um, we need to go out there and steal all the intellectual property and all the ideas so we can make it here. Thousand Talents Program. Yeah, Thousand Talents Program. Because uh, because that's what's been happening, mm. Okay. Uh, of course, the, the real ideal situation would be for things to be developed and homegrown. In other words, invented in China. But China currently lacks that ability yeah. for various reasons. One of them being uh, the educational system in China is more about doing something uh, that you're told and learning how to do something in a certain way rather than being creative. And uh, There's a lot of stuff. We're not going to go into it. But the, the end result is that China has problems developing their own chips. Very good at making stuff to a certain design, reverse engineering, um, and we see that with everything from military hardware to whatever. But making their own chips has been an issue. All right. Um, anyway, something very interesting has happened over this past week. First, I want to show a little clip from Huawei's self-driving, you know, Huawei's Tesla knockoff that they've got right now, okay, has a self-driving capability. Yeah. Just like Tesla. That's right. And this is it being demonstrated in China. And the guy who's taking this test drive, he's got a saleswoman with him. He asks in Chinese, is this thing good at recognizing people? Right. Let's see what happens. So she says, yes. Oh, it's very good at recognizing people. And, you know, it'll avoid them and stuff. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yeah. And by the way, listeners, yes, we did laugh at someone getting hit by a car, but it was very slow. Yeah, it was very slow. No, they, they, didn't, they didn't get injured. No. Um, and okay. To, but yes, we did laugh at someone getting hit by a car. To be fair, um, autopilots and cars, uh, you know, AI, they are not prepared to deal with China's traffic. No. Seriously. No. It's a... Uh, it's a battlefield. Yeah. It's just like... No. We, it's like... <laughs> what? You we know? Call, you know the, the person that came out there and hit the car? We call them poppers. We actually yeah, we a, call them poppers. They call poppers because they literally pop out of nowhere. Right? Like that. Like, without Outside looking, yeah. without looking, they just cross the road. And this happens, uh, especially when you get out of the city centers in a lot of towns. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Oh, you so if you watch for poppers. They don't look. We still have PTSD from poppers. Yeah, and still, every time I drive here in the States, when I see a car or something on the side of the road, I'm like, oh, I, I get that when reaction. When people pull out, because we live in kind of back roads, mm -hmm. when I see people pulling out of their driveway, I yeah. my heart pounds, and I go, ah, oh, they're <laughs> yeah. going to pop. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It reminds anyway. me of rural China. Yeah. Uh, anyway, China has a lot of catching up to do with, in all fields, even though they put on a very good slick game of propaganda. Sure. And you see all these videos out there praising China's new tech and all that. So let's get on to the main part here. <clears throat> a Chinese company called PowerStar um, has just announced a new homegrown domestic CPU. That's their line. They're the company's power leader, right? Is it? Oh, sorry, power. Yeah, sorry, power leader. The yeah, power star is the uh, CPU. What is it called again? Power leader? More like what? Uh, it's like lack of power follower. You know what I'm saying? Weak follower. Yeah, weak follower. That's it. <laughs> weak follower. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, so weak follower 
because <laughs> you'll find out that's what they are. Um, they released this. Now, it made big news in China because this is supposedly their first homegrown CPU. Yeah. Okay. This is something that's made in China, domestically made in China, for China, by China. And that's got, can I say something? Yeah. That's got to scare all these people that are putting these restrictions on China because yeah. that means they just defeated all these sanctions mm. and all these restrictions and China just won the chip war. I'm yeah. basically just reading headlines from CCP propaganda. Yeah, YouTubers. you'll see a lot of this. Oh, too bad. Wow. Like, oh, Biden screwed up. You know, America screwed up. China's, America lost. Yeah. The oh, no. War. China really did. So anyway. Uh, by the way, mm -hmm. is that something to 5G or? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all got to do with this one. AI 5G expertise. Anyway, so here's the long, the, the short story of the long, so to speak. They've come out with a CPU and they had a press release about it, right? And this is a company, and what's kind of interesting is I looked into the company and they basically just used to specialize, specialize in data center markets. Mm -hmm. So they would take care of like your server room and set things so up. So unrelated. Kind, kind of unrelated and they used Intel-based stuff anyway, like all this stuff's Intel-based. In the past. So they'll set up your server room and they'll put your servers in there with Intel CPUs. Anyway, they're like, now we've got the first homegrown um, CPU. So let's take a little closer look at this um, at this CPU. Let's zoom in. Enhance. Enhance. You enhanced this. You actually did it. Enhance. Yes. Let's get closer. Enhance. Enhance. And yes. yes. Let's take it to the crime lab Look at computer. You. Yeah, enhance. Crime lab. Wow. Yes, yeah, enhance. What do we see there? Oh, what did you find? Okay, this so this is some real work, <laughs> detective work you've done. Well, I mean, I can't take credit because pretty much every tech magazine covered this because when you look at it, because they also put an image of it in their press release of the actual CPU. And you line it up next to a 10th generation Intel Core i3 processor, which by the way, for those of you who don't know CPUs, the i3 is kind of like the entry level um, cost cut version of the i5, i7, all that stuff. So it's like your your cheaper one, right? Mm -hmm. You put them side by side, they are identical. And I, when I say identical, I mean identical. The silk screening on the actual, you know, chip when you look behind the whatever you call that heat heat Explain spreader. What silk screening is. Yeah. a lot of people don't know. Well, it's just just like the markings that you can see mm -hmm. like on the, the words. on the chip itself. Um, you can see there's like a weird QR code. If you can see this image, you'll be able to see on the, the top sort of right-hand side of this, the, the CPUs. You've got what's called the heat spreader on top. That's that metal cap. First of all, those are identical, 100% identical. Mm. And then if you look on the right side, you'll see like a little weird machine marking QR code thing. Those are also the same. Oh, okay. The numbering scheme on the top left of the thing is also the same numbering scheme. And then if you look closely at the actual stuff that's hmm. printed, you know, on the actual heat spreader over there, it's kind of sus. sus. Because if you look, the uh, Intel runs has got a 3.7 gigahertz uh, clock. Yeah. If you look at the Chinese power, the weak follower one, it's also 3.7 gigahertz clock. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at this, right? Yeah. Would it be out of the realm of possibility for a chip to look identical? Like you see how the like the folds on the corners yeah. and all that stuff. Would it be out of the realm of possibility that another chip would would look exactly like that, or is it, would that be weird? It's weird because look, of course, you would have to conform to the socket, so there would be certain similarities. Sure. But the fact that you can see every little pin and every little dot and every little thing is identical. There's no change. That means that it's pretty much a, a P3. But it doesn't just end that. Let's pretty at, much. I mean, uh, I mean, it is an i3. <laughs> Let's take a look closer because if we look at the model numbers, okay, the Intel's called an i3 10105. Okay. Okay. So that's like a model number. Yeah, exactly. If and you were to buy it, you'd type in the ISBN or whatever. Yeah, yeah you type yeah. that in. That's that specific uh, model of that chip. On the, the week follower, it says P3 instead of I3, okay? So it's P3, 01105. So they just took one, one of those ones and moved it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You that. see that? They, so instead of like one zero, they put zero one. Oh my 105. god. 105. So even the model number is pretty much the same. Wow. Okay. This is literally just an i3, but probably like a crap one. Like a crap one that they just refurbished. Well, I mean, this. the thing is, when you dig a little deeper, take a look. I'll show you a little clip here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, there I've got them closer for those of you who want to like pixel peep this or take a very close look. Um, you can see it's the same chip. But this is a, a video that was going around mm -hmm. showing how you can take an old i3 or an old processor and they use a laser to basically wipe off the the you know, the markings, and then uses the same laser machine to etch in new 
text. See? Let's see. Oh, okay. So there we go. That's all you need to do. So that's not like a... And I guess in my mind, I would think that's a very complicated process. No. It's not. No, no. I mean, that's it's literally... You can buy an Intel processor, stick it in one of these laser etching machines. It cleans the surface and then puts whatever text you want on there. Okay. Before we get into the implications of that, I just wanted to ask you, why does it matter? Why does it matter that China can make its... Just in case people are out of the loop. Why does it matter that China could make its own CPUs? Because then it would uh, end its reliance on foreign imports. And probably but, be able to sell them as well, right? Yeah, sell them yeah. overseas. But the most important thing is the Chinese government right now, I'll just show that to you guys one more time. There's a, uh, an Intel processor. They just wipe off the, the Intel branding and whatnot. And then um, go ahead and uh, put on whichever custom branding they want. You could call it anything you want. You call it buttholes, yeah, surfer. Yeah, anything you want, yeah. yeah. And also, for those of you who are wondering, like, what if you put it in a computer? Doesn't it show, like, because you can see the properties and run CPU things? There, there are ways for them to uh, overwrite that code so oh. that it shows a different name. Yeah, because it would be it would be talking to your computer and telling you what the schematics and. I mean, it, speed it'll just and... work as an x86 compatible processor, but when you go look at the properties, yeah. it'll say Intel whatever in there. Oh. But you can actually you can remap you that. can re you can rewrite that. It's oh. actually possible. They do that with those memory sticks and stuff. You know, when they say that it reports like a gigahertz, a, yeah. a gig, sorry, a gig size, but it's actually like sixty four megs yeah. or something. You know, they could do that. It's pretty easy. Yeah, actually, I always mm -hmm. bring this up, but I bought like what a thousand USB drives, and all of them were empty. Yeah, they're all didn't Just work. Fake. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, so the, the whole point is right now, because China's got this whole let's make everything domestic, right? Let's make everything China only. Yeah. The government is pumping billions of dollars into it. Yeah. And that means subsidies. Sure. And that means that a company, if they're smart, they can get that money. Yeah. Think about it like this. Here's here's a we're 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 weak follower comp co LTD T, TM whatever the Chinese okay? company yeah so we're that Chinese company we're like sitting at a board meeting we're like you know what we got to jump on the subsidies shit like we could make literally millions of an eye billions what do we need to do well we have to create a processor for the local market it's like well how can we do that that's nearly impossible yeah, yeah. but it's like look. All it needs to be is a fairly low power, just a desktop processor that can run like just normal like office computers and whatever, you know, yeah. just a every day. Like what's what's currently on the what market? It, what does a government computer need? Yeah. And, right? and let's look. What's currently on the market that fits all those needs? Oh, i3. They're low cost. Yeah. They do the job. They do exactly what we want. And we can buy them very cheaply. And all we need to do is put our own markings on it. And we'll get paid billions in subsidies or hundreds of millions or whatever in subsidies from the government for creating this local thing. That's rich. And then we, you know, it'll cost us nothing then. We just break the money in. So what you're trying to say mm -hmm. is that a Chinese company, because of all this hype around China going to be self-sufficient, Xi Jinping said, we can do everything ourselves. We don't need these mm -hmm. other countries to help us out. And we yeah. don't care if they sanction us. Yeah. We can do everything ourselves. So there's billions of dollars on the table, if yeah. not trillions overall, to develop your own stuff. So they're saying we can't develop our own stuff. What we're going to do is buy shitty, cheap i3 processors. Yeah. Even if it doesn't get us profit to sell these, yeah, right? Because it'll be cheaper, right? Yeah, yeah. So you'll sell them cheaper. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because I got billions of dollars yeah. from the CCP. Exactly. It wouldn't it's, matter. It's double self-own. Yeah, because think about it. They don't have R&D costs. They didn't have to develop it. They don't need the machines, the, the, the lithography machines and stuff to create these, right? So they don't need any oh, investment. Oh, I see. There's nothing. Yeah. They just have to have an office somewhere and say, oh, we make them in this factory. Right. You know what I mean? You just have a shell office. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need, need to do anything. Nope. You just have a dude unboxing i3s. Yeah, exactly. Unboxing i3s them. and putting the factory is there just to re-etch yeah. re the CPUs. That's insane. That, I mean, that is such a... It's, it'd be a failure if it was just a scam, like trying to scam like the customers, but they're actually mm. scamming the central government. Yeah, that's it's it potentially very dangerous to do that. Not only for them, but it's potentially dangerous for the entire economy that they're... Mm. Yeah, how much percentage of their economy they're dumping into this yeah. R&D for, or R &D for their own self-domestic checks. Yeah, so just to clarify, by the way, everyone out there, is that there's no definitive proof that these are i3 processors. We can't say for 100% certainty, just look, just like but it. come on, like the evidence is there. If it looks like a duck, smells like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a duck. 
if it's a if it does all those things it's a what is it a power <laughs> it's a, a weak, weak follower. follower it's a weak follower um, cpu and i mean just to show show you like right now bringing cpus into <laughs> china i mean here we've got a thing of a guy caught with 48 cpus which also they just look like those i3s don't they it could be i5s, i7s, i9s, you know, but um, caught in his shoes. And this is kind of an interesting thing. You'd wonder. He's like, ow, ow, <laughs> ow. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, surely you would damage crunch, them. Crunch, crunch. They're all broken. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're not in the soles. They must yeah, be yeah, on top of sure. his foot or something. Oh, true, true. In, like, know? little bags or something. May yeah. Maybe. Anyway, there was. I was always confused about the smuggling these things into China. And I was like, why would you yeah, smuggle? Yeah, why would you smuggle in? Yeah, why would you smuggle? Because, you know, like, usually... The biggest thing for me was you'd always see them catching people smuggling iPhones in to China. And I'm like, why? They're made here. You know, when yeah. I'm living in China, why are they smuggling them tax. in? And it's because of tax. Because believe it or not, um, mm -hmm. if you buy an iPhone in China, it's way more expensive than an iPhone that you buy in the it can States. Be, it can be like 50% more. Yeah, it's super, because of all the tax, import tax, luxury yeah. tax, whatever they put on there. Um, and that, of course, is why it's kind of unfair dealing with China is because if you try to sell your product in China, like your old car, if you're like, a, I don't know, Chevrolet and you try to sell a car there, you have to pay this huge amount of tax. People have to pay this tax. So it makes yeah. your product way less appealing than a local brand, which doesn't have to pay that tax. So they yeah. can make it much cheaper. Can I zoom out here for a second? Sure, sure. I think this chip thing, you mm -hmm. know, if it turns out to be true, which it very much looks to be oh, yeah. that this company is power slave, yeah, weak, whatever. Weak follower. Is power slave a game? Uh, I think it might be. Anyway, this power company, right? Yeah. The, the weak leader. Yeah, weak, weak follower. follower, yeah. Weak follower, if it turns out to be true, and these are just I3s, and they're scamming the, the CCP, right? Yeah. I want you to zoom out and look at this. What does this mean for China's big projects internationally, right? When you look at the Belt and Road Initiative, yeah. if you're dealing with this level of corruption that we've seen with our own eyes in China, yeah. we've seen the, the sheer levels of scamming. When you go to a big tech company, yeah. I know a three-letter one that I won't say. Sure. And their own leadership are taking all of the R&D and tech in their own company that's already stolen from Samsung and yeah. Sony and et cetera. Taking that from their own company that they work for. Yeah. And then making their own factories to make even lower cost stuff. So mm -hmm. they're stealing from themselves. Yeah. You look at a chip company doing the same thing, but stealing from the central government now. Yeah. What do you think they're doing when that even that strict lack of oversight in China is gone? Yeah. When you go to Mozambique, yeah, and you're buying off a local dictator to build a build a bridge that never gets finished, right? Sure. You can start to see why you don't do business with China on an international level with a government. Yeah. You the the potential for losing everything and nothing to be completed or actually done mm. is so massive that if you've done business in China like ourselves, you will know how much of this country is fake. Absolutely. Everything, I mean, everything has the potential to be faked. Yeah. And so that's why it's just hilarious why they need so much propaganda surrounding this topic. Yeah. Why there's so many YouTubers. I mean, you could look up China chips or whatever. You'll, you know, you throw a, whatever, a duck at the wall. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The blood will hit something. Yeah. Anyway, um, you'll see so many YouTubers working for the Chinese government. Mm-hmm. To spread this idea that China's pulled it off, everything, and the done. U.S. is the loser. They're losing all this money because they can't sell chips to China you anymore. Actually, you found something very interesting. Yeah, lots of this. That? Well, there's a lot of uh, propaganda out there that oh no, you know, America sucks now. Everyone's losing their jobs there because they can't sell chips to China anymore. They've lost their biggest market. They're so foolish to put sanctions. In other words, it's them saying. Just, just stop with the sanctions. We need those chips. Stop. You know, we're going to try and make trick you into selling to us again. Yeah. You know, but again, look, I want to play devil's advocate here. Okay. Let's just say for some reason that this is a homegrown. It just um, looks identical. It is identical. It is an i3. It's but let's just say it is like a homegrown sure. thing. It turns out there's sand. How, how can it be legitimate <laughs> that they use the exact same heat spread and the exact same everything? So even if it was homegrown, it's just a cheap copy. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. So there's no domestically the, developed. At the thing. very best case scenario, it's just a very cheap shit knockoff copy of an already kind of defunct Dude, low it's power from, processor. From like 
2021 or something was the last time they made these i3s. You got me saying processor now. Yeah. I'm an anti <laughs> Okay. <laughs> processor is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But seriously, it's an it's old technology. You know, when it comes to computers, if you've got a CPU that's two years old, you're kind of falling behind. Yeah. So when your latest and greatest processor that you're bringing out is just a rebranded two-year-old CPU, or it's your knockoff of an old CPU, which is not going to be nearly as good as the real thing, you've got a problem. What do you expect when you name your company Weak Follower? Yeah, exactly. And the, the <laughs> thing is, up for disaster. In, Intel, I, I looked around. There's no licensing agreement from Intel. They haven't no. licensed i3s no. to be made. The last time they licensed a chip was in the, the 286 era. Whoa. Okay. So that's 80s. Yeah. There's no way they're going to be licensing their crap out no. to like this weird, like little company in China. So no. just, <laughs> just, you know, I guess we're beating a dead horse here, but like seriously though, I think it it's just applies to so many things. It does. And how, how dare they think that people will fall for that? Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, look, this is my brand new invention. And I whip out like uh, something that's very common. Now, this also gives a lot of context to the geopolitical struggle with Taiwan. Yes. Why do you think <clears throat> China needs Taiwan Five. so badly? They could yeah. dominate the world with chips, right? They, they could. could. Yeah. But they can't without Taiwan. Yeah. Because they yeah. can't make them. They yeah. literally... It looks like they're scrubbing them down and writing their name on shit i3s. Well, I got to tell you, because this goes deeper, okay? I, I just wanted to play a little thing here. It's a 5G phone. <laughs> Can you tell me, what is a 5G racing game? <laughs> Hold on, go back to the beginning. Okay. So this is a shill, right? Yeah, this is just, you see CGTN up in the corner yeah. there, so it's China State Media. I'm not familiar with this shill. His name's Adam Host. <laughs> Adam Host. <laughs> yeah. Adam Host. All right, see you. Okay. Yeah, 5G. A 5G phone. He's playing a 5G racing game. Now, you know, this is typical China. If you throw the... the you just need to throw 5G on anything. They literally just keep saying it because they think if they say it enough, people will believe them. Like a 5G instant noodles. Yeah. It could be 5G anything. Remember? And AI. I saw AI on toys yes, that have AI. nothing to do with AI just because it has a battery in it. Yeah. So, you know, this is China pushing its whole homegrown on 5G AI nonsense. 5G <laughs> Yeah. What do you have Sharing a five and you're the China's car is in the shape of a five G? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you see all this nonsense. But you know, this whole idea of fake chips from China has been a very long uh, standing problem. You know that uh, I'll give you a couple of examples here. I watch a lot of old retro tech channels because, mm. you know, I'm very much into the old computers and yeah. stuff. That's my hobby is, you know, cars and old tech. And the biggest issue people are having for, well, at least for the last decade or so, is when they need replacement chips for their old computers, right? So you've got an old, old stuff. Yeah, like a Commodore 64 yeah. or something, okay? And you need a, a specific chip from there. Doesn't matter whatever it is. You can't buy new ones. No. I mean, some you can, sure. but like there are plenty that are not made anymore. Yeah. So what you do is you um, you go on eBay or whatever, and you find sellers that are selling all these chips because, you know, when e-waste, you know, they don't just crush it in a crusher, okay? It's just a funny word, e-waste. I know. But, uh, <laughs> Sounds like 5G AI. <laughs> it does. If you throw away like your old TV or something, yeah. it doesn't just get crushed. It ends up going to China uh, yeah. most of the time. And, you know, Hua Bay, I used to walk around and see this, right? I, I don't want to always say this, but there was literally a factory outside of Huizhou that was yeah. burning VCRs from yeah. America. Yeah. Yeah. So what they... Burn them. Yeah, just burn them. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens is uh, they get sent to Shenzhen and you've got people literally sitting out in the open in the alleyways there, um, yeah. breaking things yeah. apart and taking the chips out. And then they go inside and they clean them up and then they sell them on eBay or they sell them back to other suppliers or they sell them to local companies in China yeah. that are making devices and they need a little IC chip, but they need a little memory chip or whatever. And so they buy these secondhand parts because they're cheaper, they're refurbished and they just use them, right? Mm. So you see that happening a lot. So a lot of these old chips are coming from China, but now, of course, there's not always a big supply of these things. And so the Chinese sellers are quite clever and they figure out, well, all we need to do is print the model number of the chip on there, sell it as that chip, send it all the way overseas. By the time the people figure out it's fake and doesn't work, they're not going to bother trying to send it back anyway and it was cheap, so they're not going to bother, right? Huge scam. And they use the, the, the China's free shipping ah. scam. You know that the China has that preferred trading partner, partner thing yeah. with the WHO and the U U Universal Postal Union? There's some port that's involved in that. Oh, you mean the port of Dandong? Probably. So anyway, they get to send these chips for free, 
they get their like ten dollars or whatever for a chip, and they send you something fake. By the time you get it, it's like too late. So let's take a look. Like for instance, uh, I watch these guys, and a lot of them have this problem. So this guy's just putting some, I guess, isopropyl alcohol or something on mm. on these chips. And you can immediately see the one at the top is obviously a fake. Take a look yeah, compared, like... compared to the others. And so he tested them. I've watched plenty of these. But now here's where it can be a problem. Okay. This happened, um, uh, I don't know, two years ago or so. But this okay. in 2020, three years ago. F-16 pilot died when his ejection seat failed. Okay. So it ejected, but the parachute didn't deploy. Hmm. After like a pretty lengthy investigation, because his wife got involved, it looks like... Some of the chips in this uh, ejection seat sequencer module were counterfeit, fake wow. chips. Wow. Yeah. So wow. you can see here, um, six transistors had no conformal coating, were heavily gouged, had arcing scratch marks, were considered obsolete, and were suspected of being counterfeit. Wow. Well, and, rest in peace. That's terrible. I mean, yeah, it is terrible. And another thing about this whole recycling, because, you know, when it comes to counterfeit chips, uh, from China, you do get counterfeit chips just like fake, like that one where the guy rubbed off the yeah. markings. Again, that's just fake. They just printed some rubbish on a chip that was in the same package. Yeah. So it's not the same chip. I mean, you can order a hard drive and it's full of sand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, another thing they do with the recycling is you might get a legitimate chip, but you get different grades of chips, right? Yeah. So for military-grade chips have got extra coating to heat. guard against radiation and heat and stuff yeah. like that, right? But they would have taken a chip out of a consumer product and just cleaned it up and sent okay. it over. A washing machine. Yeah, and it's not good enough, right? right? It's not good enough to be in an ejector no. seat, for instance. Right. So it won't work. <laughs> With jet fuel. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's why they're saying like, yeah. why, like uh, no conformal coating. So there's supposed to be a uh, uh, conforming coating on these things. Nothing oh. on there. Heavily gouged and arcing scratch marks. So that's from when they were like scrubbing off the glue the or whatever. Or and whatever. so you know yeah. what I mean. But okay, this one aside, I'll give you another example of why these fake chips are a big deal. And that's uh, this Poseidon um, aircraft, which is a it's Boeing. A yeah, you know, it's kind of like the Aurora. Oh, you know, chef's French kiss. chef's French kiss, kiss, you know. Um, French kiss the chef. And it's got a module which has like an FPGA in it. And the whole point of this module is uh, to detect if the ice is forming on the plane. Yeah. Okay, and it warns you and it, it activates something. To, I don't know what it does, to be completely honest with you, but it's got to do with the icing, you know, icing on the wings and stuff. Icing on the cake. Yeah. So what happened was they found out that in this module, there were fake chips in some of them. Uh, and how they found out was plane took off and then they started hearing rattling noises from within the module because what happened was the chip popped out of its socket because it was a fake piece of crap and it was just rattling around inside. Now, no one died, but they could have. Because, Someone died in that F-16 pilot Yeah, died. I mean, to think about it. If that de-icing icing warning system is not working and you just get tons of ice on your plane and you crash, everyone could die, right? This leads me to believe this is a wider problem. It's huge. So what they did was they traced it back, okay? See, there's there's the correct one at the top, and there's a suspect. You know, when you start to look, you can see that they're not the same chip. So the exemplar is the correct one. Yeah, that's okay. the one. So what they did was they traced it back. And the supplier, because, you know, with the military, they subcontract. Yeah. And that's their weakest link. You know, they have to subcontract. They don't have people, like, making chips in the military. Shout out to Zelda. Um what, the, if the Link game? has a low HP, he's the weakest Link. <laughs> he really is. Because yeah, I know everyone's not watching our show right now and playing Zelda. Yeah, well, they got to learn that it's not such a great game. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> seriously, though. You're going to learn yeah, the hard way. Yeah, you will. You'll learn the hard way. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go. So they traced it back to a company in California, mm -hmm. um, sold 300 of these chips to the military. Okay. Wow. Now, what had happened is that company in California had purchased these 300 chips from a company that got them from Shenzhen, Ooh, China, where I used to live. That's where Huajian Bay is. That's yeah. where I told you where they take yeah. all the stuff out. And what they did is they tested the first <laughs> the first 50 chips they tested and they passed, but they failed to test the remaining 250 chips. And within the rest of the 250 chips were a whole bunch of counterfeits. Ouch. That's Ouch. bad. That's bad. Bad oversight. That's not great. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to say, like, you know. This was a, by the way, this is a Boeing, um, uh, you know, Poseidon, P-8 Poseidon plane in the military where they've got very strict quality control checks because it's the military. 
Uh. What's saying this crap doesn't end up in your domestic travel Airbus or Boeing? Yeah, that's true. You yeah, know? I didn't think about that. What if it's like a civilian use, right? Delta, never, never mind yeah. military, civilian. Like yeah. how many millions of people fly every day? Delta Airlines is not going to have as much strict quality control as the military. No. In fact, you know? it would be way less. Jet Blue. JetBlue's going to be like, Airways. it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be like, <laughs> let's get them chips and they just hire, like get, get them. And they're probably going to end up being counterfeit a lot of the time. Burger King might so, die. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> next time he's flying. I know Burger King might, you <laughs> yeah, know, please have yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that this, this counterfeit chip thing yeah. is more than just a bunch of scammers making money off of retro guys fixing yeah. computers. It's dangerous. Yeah. Because it, these counterfeit chips from China can end up in anything. And it could end up in your car. Sure. Could end up in the the airbag safety system. That's true. Could be anything. Yeah, and more and more like these kind of lower end kind of mass produced chips are being used from China in our normal daily stuff because our yeah. think about it, like 20 years ago less of our stuff had chips or of course. computer functionality. Yeah. Now everything does, right? Absolutely. Everything. Every single thing. Your hose. You yeah. know, you can have a an AI hose. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, dude. Automated hose thing. That could have mm. a chip in it, you know what yeah. I mean? A fire a fire alarm. Yeah, you know that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So it's it's dangerous, right? And you just see the lengths that um, companies will go to, and especially yeah. with this so-called domestic CPU. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a Chinese state employee uh, works for uh, what's it called, China Daily. Mm -hmm. What does he say about this? Actually, oh wow, so good. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah, what are you so doing? He's, right? He endorses this. I, I guess so. I think he might be confused. It's a, a little bit of a technological topic for him. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's... Uh... Wow. That's a little too much for me. That's fine. He yeah. saved, he no, saved his okay. ass there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he just doesn't understand how, yeah. how this all works. But look... What if you had a 5G toothbrush and it catches on fire, melts your hand, yeah. and then explodes in your mouth? You have no teeth. Yeah, exactly. Right? This is a huge problem. Remember those vapes that were oh. blowing up? Oh, yeah. That's chips, dude. Yeah. That's heat course. regulators. Yeah, and it's also uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that inside lithium batteries, there are little uh, chips and yeah. stuff in there to prevent things from going bad. What if you're some dude in an alleyway of Hua Chiang Bay? If you go there, you'll see how haphazard this stuff oh, yeah. is. This yeah. is not like a hermetically sealed lab. Yeah. You know, they're making vape batteries. What do you, of course they're going to blow up. The, you know, that's this is an issue, and it's something I've seen with my own eyes a lot because I, I used to spend a lot of time in yeah. Hua Chiang Bay. I've got footage of it where yeah, you've just got girls sitting there like – taking components out of old stuff, cleaning it up, and then yep. they just bundle it up, and then they sell it to the factories, yep. you know? And, I mean, like, for instance here, people that do not have a trained eye, if they looked at these two chips, it would be very difficult for them to tell which is a, um, a fraudulent one because yeah. they have the same model numbers and so on on them. Yeah. So, like, how are you going to know? If you haven't seen a million of them before, how are you going to know that the font is a little different? You know what I mean? How would you? Yeah, so it's an issue. I wouldn't know unless yeah. you're like in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, just who's taking apart their stuff looking for counterfeit chips? Exactly. Right, and this is yeah. ending up in consumer grade stuff potentially. Oh yeah, it, I mean it is already, and with chip yeah. shortages, you know, they get creative. True, dude. Like seriously, you know, this whole chip shortage has really like bred a huge new wave of counterfeit chips. That's true. It's so, like people are looking for a specific chip, and. You know, they can reprogram certain ICs and stuff to do other tasks. So, you know, quite often you'll get a chip which is branded as something and it works. It doesn't, doesn't work as well, but it just works. But it's not actually that chip. It's just been reprogrammed to do that task, you know? I think big chips behind this. Yeah, big chips. Anyway. No, think about this. What's that? Think about the, the whole COVID thing, right? Yeah. Poor Dietrich like the <laughs> virus with the help of the Chinese government to get supremacy in the chip race. Yeah, 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 yeah There's yeah. some guy on like Truth Social talking yeah, about Yeah, we'll be talking about it, yeah. Anyway, um, let's move on from this. Don't want to get too technical and a yeah. lot of it is... No, that was good. That was a really good report. Mm. Nice job. I just really would like people to understand how much of a big problem this is. Yeah. And it's not just some flash in the pan yeah. thing. It's something that everybody kind of has to and be pardon, concerned about. Pardon the jokes. I just wanted to spice oh, it got, up. Got, you got to keep it you alive. Gotta, you got to chip you know? it out, you know? You gotta, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Give us a sound bite. Let's, let's okay. What about the, like. Let's uh, cleanse the palate. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good yeah. way to cleanse the palate. That's how you cleanse the palate. It's time for uh, Wumao Corner, everybody. That's where we talk about the haters. We got quite the hater for you today. Um, Hater aid. Yeah, so... Hate parade over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do we got? That's a long... Yeah, it is. a long title. I like to bit make it long because it's got some very interesting Chinese in there for people to translate. I also think that you elongate things, just like you did Pig Bay. You stretch it out I mean, like and slow it down for 50%, 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually 10 hours long. 
Yeah, I just, you know, I found, I was, I was making an ad for, uh, you know, one of the products and um, yes. I was looking for something boring and I literally <laughs> searched for watching paint dry and there's like on YouTube multiple videos of like 10 hours watching paint dry. Yeah, and then people are like, well, I like 5.34, 5 yeah. hours, 34 minutes and is my favorite part. People are watching this shit. Do you remember we were looking for uh, sound effects? Yeah. And we needed a like a bouncing sound, like boing. Yeah, like, boing, like yeah. A, not like a, a word, yeah. like an actual sound. Yeah, like a bouncing, bouncing, yeah. And we needed that, and we looked it up, and there was like a huge 25-minute compilation yeah, of like yeah. bouncing sounds. Yeah, one of them was like bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. bouncy. It was a man going bouncy, <laughs> yeah. bouncy, yeah. bouncy. And anyway, there's there's boing, boing, you know, all those kind of cartoon sound effects. And people in the comments, mm -hmm. I'm, I kid you not, they were like time-stamping parts, and they're like, this evokes feelings of nostalgia that I just can't tell you how it was important to me. Yeah, I remember that. It's like, what are these people doing? <laughs> hey, man. The internet, bro. Yeah, internet's a weird place. <laughs> anyway. So what do we got going on here? I think... Um, I black screen. Well, don't put it up there. Now it's black. We look, Spooky. we're staring into the void. If you stare into the void, it might stare back at you. Yeah. Um, or scarier, you might get a an annoying <laughs> an annoying Chinese know-it-all who thinks he's great. So, I want to Chinese this. government know-it-all. Well, say. no, not direct government. This has pretty much government. No government <laughs> influence that I've been warned about. Mm -hmm. Don't say he has government influence because we don't know if he's in the CCP. He runs a very influential think tank that has things adjacent to CCP policy. He is in Beijing. And he gets government approval to make these things because they go viral on the Chinese internet. Like yeah. this video. I'd like you guys to enjoy what would happen if China decided right now mm -hmm. that they wanted to get rid of 5 million Taiwan independent supporters in Taiwan. Let's see what methodology might be used. How many people live in Taiwan? 25 million. Mm -hmm. So okay. five, let's say there's, you know, the, the joke in, I shouldn't say joke, the propaganda in China is that only about 5 million people actually support Taiwanese independence, even though it's actually close. The people sympathetic to this closer to 90%. 90% right? of Taiwan, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily full independence, but at least not reuniting yeah, with China. Not, right? It's not even uniting, just you know, being absorbed. Sorry, yeah. I shouldn't being say reuniting. Absorbed, was yeah. never, never it's there. never united in <laughs> yeah. the first place. That's me buying, yeah, the yeah, buying it up. Yeah, so yeah. this is the most sane, most level-headed CCP supporter and his method of what he would do. Okay, we're gonna watch watch a little. Okay. So, 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 yeah, so he goes into more depth. He does, but I think we got to break it down. Sure. So this guy says, um, if the five million independence people want to fight, well, you know, it should be like Dani, Dani, you know, Lu, you know, punch country. It's not it means big country, Dalu, yeah, it means you know, mainland. mainland yeah. yeah. So he's like, oh, with our Daluda military and our Daluda power and our Daluda everything. Um, We'd just be able to kill them all, sending drones and stuff, as effortlessly as cooking a small fish. This guy tries, well, this guy's job is to run a think tank that is adjacent to CCP policy. Yeah. And you have this message going viral mm. on the Chinese internet, on Billy Billy, an anime sharing website, right? This is meant to address the public. This is what yeah. is meant to, this is what the public are consuming right now. Yeah. This is not like a, crazy fringe the guy might be crazy fringe but it's being proliferated in china if it's a, if it's allowed to go viral yeah. in china if it's allowed to spread around it means it's condoned by the government not only in, it condoned we, we added a little addition to that endorsed endorsed yes yeah. it's condoned and endorsed because if it wasn't it'd be silenced it immediately like immediately Whoop! yeah pull it down yeah so what else is this this guy's such a loser, by the way. I just have to say. He's going to cook you like a small fish, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those guys who um, has no no like actual real merit. So he always has to lie on the you know the merits of others. He's like, oh, we're so powerful. We're so... He's sitting there. This man's nothing. You know I want, I mean? Yeah, I want, you, I want you to understand that he is something in China, though. Yeah, this no, isn't like... A... We're, we don't play random peoples. No, 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 sure. Yeah. He's, he's the... Very influential. He's the leader of a think tank. Yeah, a big one. Yeah, let's see what else he has to say. 
所以呢，这个解放台湾做最坏的打算，一定是得到最好的结果，就是把五百万台独势力人都要消灭。So let's just murder five million. Yeah, he's like, yeah. He just said, let's murder five million people, and not leaving any behind. This <laughs> 都不能剩。我说你你不。I mean, that's women, children, five million people. Yeah, it's just like let's let's murder them. Let's murder them. Yeah. 能不能做到这布局 ？So he's this is his different scenario. 漫天的无人机，漫天的导弹，横着打吧。最后就组织这么统一军去接收每一个地方，那有什么呀？哪有那么难的呀 ？Yeah, I like how he's trying to play down how difficult it would be to attack Taiwan. He's like, oh, it's propaganda. Psh, it's like, psh, just drones and missiles attacking horizontally. Why horizontally? I don't know, but you know, <laughs> it's just like, psh, you know, we're gonna.、Psh. Anyway, he's uh, he's saying like, what's so difficult about that? Chinese, I understand. What yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you know, the thing is because there's been a lot of analysis of if China were to attack Taiwan. How difficult it would be. That's the propaganda. Yeah. yeah. So, actual real military strategists who've had real military experience have looked into it. The thing about China is that they have no real military experience other than attacking their own people、mm. and attacking <laughs> Vietnam. True. Seriously, like the PLA. Laugh, yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. That's the military experience. You know, is mowing students down in Tiananmen Square. Exactly. You know, the people、mm. that are still like it. old enough to still be in the military. Like, yeah, some、oh, of them. And, and losing to Vietnam. Like yeah, lose, said. losing to Vietnam. <laughs> Getting their asses kicked by some Indians with sticks on the border, you know, it's like it's not very good. They're not. LA doesn't have、yeah. a good reputation. So this guy is well. We could just say that his、uh, ability to、um, I don't know think about these things and strategize military is obviously not very good because he's got nothing to base it on. No, you know, it's just theory. Oh, we'll just send drones and missiles and we'll wipe out five million people. And why is it difficult? He's trying to sound real hard, but again,、yeah. it's propaganda. I actually think this is his Tinder profile. <laughs> He's trying to look very cool. Yeah, he's trying to look cool, isn't he? He's not very. He's not succeeding. He's not. He doesn't have a very, com- very confident posture, does he?、Yeah. Well, he also his ver his verbiage is bad. Yeah. That's the man. He said, "You how do you handle it?" I said, "The first thing is to declare martial law." Is what they want to do. Who wants to go to the United States? Go right away. Give the United States 500,000 citizens. Don't come back ever again. So, that was his other thing: is just send them all to America. Oh yeah, it's like oh, we'll declare martial law. If anyone wants to go to America, they can go and then、yeah. never come back. Yeah,、mm. isn't it nice when people talk? Their own country. Isn't it nice when people talk about other people's stuff as it, as if it belongs to them? <laughs> it's a different country. Yeah, it's so pathetic. It、yeah. doesn't belong to China. It、no. never has. And I mean, here's the thing that I I think a lot of people might not realize or doesn't ever sink in is that. China's been claiming Taiwan for the longest time, but China, as in the CCP, has never governed Taiwan. Never once. They、This、were never. It never happened. Yeah, it's not like it was a country that yeah, was taken yeah, away. Yeah. You know, like I could, I could argue that I could see both sides of the whole Korea thing, right? At one point, Korea was a, a, a single a unit, yeah, yeah. an entity, right? Yeah, one entity, and it was split up by a war. Yes. They like people like to think that the Chinese Civil War, when the Guomindang went, the, the Nationalist Party ran away and went to, to Taiwan, Taiwan、yeah. to govern it. That somehow that was the Civil War. That kind of implies that Mao Zedong already had taken over Taiwan and was、yeah. governing it, and then he lost it, and then it deserves、mm. to come back because、yeah. of law. That's not like Korea. It、no. never was part、no. of China. It was never governed by the CCP. It never belonged to them. No. So they're just like, hey, you know, they talk. It's it's like a a stilted.、Uh, Person who's got a crush on a girl or someone, someone else is dating them. Is like, oh yeah, you're dating my my girlfriend, but、yeah. they were never together. Yeah, you know what I mean, that type of thing. It's a very jealous a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> girlfriend. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, it's pathetic, and I've seen the the Chinese government these days been putting out a lot of propaganda、yeah. about like, if we you know reunify, as they say, we'll be able to give a lot of support to Taiwan. We'll be able to give them. Taiwan doesn't need shit. In fact, Taiwan's about five times richer per person yet. <clears throat> I know, dumbass. Taiwan could give mainland China support、yeah. in a lot of ways. First of all,、uh, technology, as we've seen, China can't even make a, a an i3 processor. Okay, Taiwan makes the most advanced processors in the world for your Nvidia chips. The world for, needs yeah, Taiwan. Yeah, the world needs Taiwan, not just mainland、yeah. China. But Taiwan has the most advanced technology, more advanced than Japan anywhere. That chip, the TSMC, whatever it is, that's incredible, right? A democratic government. Democratic government. Social program. Actual culture. Welfare. 
healthcare, free yes. healthcare. The culture which was destroyed in mainland China, Chinese culture that Mao Zedong on purpose erased because he was like, we're getting rid of the old fours. We're deleting all of our culture. He went around smashing temples and burning manuscripts and t- statues and all that. There's lots of footage, right? And he Completely. emptied the recycle bin. Yeah. And he's, it all. There's nothing left, right? But because there was that civil war and the KMT fled to Taiwan, they took a lot of the treasures and most importantly, an intangible treasure, which is the culture and the traditions. History of China. Because if you think about it for decades, in China, people were not allowed to practice those things. It was lost. It was not passed down to children. Oh, okay? They tried to get rid of Chinese characters. Yeah. There's <laughs> nothing left in mainland China. It's a hollow shell of what, it, what Chinese culture used to be. Yeah. But Taiwan is rich with that real culture that was never erased. Flourishing. Yeah. Expanding. So Taiwan could offer culture, history, and technology to mainland China. That's how, why they want it. And how to run a government. Yes. <laughs> you know. Taiwan needs nothing from mainland China. No. no. You know what no. I'm saying? Just, just putting it out there. And what else does this guy have to say? Why does he want to send them to Guantanamo Bay? He's saying like if they cause yeah. America trouble or whatever, like, you know. I no, mean, uh, in, 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 China. in China is what I meant to say. Yeah. yeah, he's like their own version of Guantanamo Bay. So here's, here's his predictions about the next election, which is coming up in yeah. Taiwan. Okay. Let's take a look. So Probably eat a, eat, so the threat was that there won't be another president of Taiwan. This is the, the, the current president Tsai Ing-wen is the last president of Taiwan. This is this is textbook propaganda. Yes, this is just yes. the kind of thing to scare people yeah. and to say, you know, why even bother? Because yeah. you're just not going to be able to choose. You know, this is like straight if, up if Nazi want, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it is. If you want the peace plan, yeah, he's saying then don't have an election. Just. Yeah, give up. Try, they're just trying to intimidate. Yeah. But yeah, like you it's say, this nasty. is there's a nasty, very influential think yeah. tank leader. But this gives you a clear insight into what the Chinese government wants. Yep. This is their plan. Yeah. You know? I mean, and it's it's not the plans that they tell you, right? No. It's not the plans that they put out on global. They make threats in Global Times and other English media and stuff from the state. Mm-hmm. But they don't say it like that. No. This is actually what's happening behind. They're like, scenes. hey, we're just going to murder everyone. Yeah. It's really what <laughs> they're saying. Yeah. We don't care. We're just going to murder you all. This is on an anime site. Yeah. You know course, what I mean? Like, yeah. this is going around to children and people, and this is like, oh, this is, so this is our policy, probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of, the think tanks pull the strings, it's right? It's kind of ridiculous, though. Anyway, I guess it's time before we continue, let's lighten the mood a little bit yeah. and uh, tell you what you missed on Monday. For those of you who don't know, we have a show. <laughs> Not this. this. Not this guy. This is shit. You, you know what's going to be so um, sad is that this guy, he's just going to die with none of his dreams ever coming to, That's to fruition. That's true. All of his like predictions and all of his blusters are just going to be for nothing. It must yeah. really suck for people like that. Yeah. You know? It will. He'll be like a Lauren, you know, dying yeah, on his death deathbed. And he's like, have you invaded Taiwan yet? Yeah. Uh, just like Mao died without invading Taiwan and Deng Xiaoping. No, died you know without invading happen. Taiwan and you know Hu Jintao, you know, <laughs> died because he's gone missing since that thing. Yeah. He hasn't come back, right? No. They escorted him out, remember? And he's him. done. You know what? what's going to happen? What? He's going to be laying on his, on his deathbed, right? Yeah. In his ripe old age, 90, right? He's going to be like, oh, grandson. Right? He's going to have, for some reason, to speak with a British accent. He's going to say, <laughs> grandson, we invaded Taiwan. Did we... Glorious China received Taiwan back into the motherland. And he'll say, Grandpa, you're in John Hopkins Hospital for medical medical treatment in America. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring you over to America yeah, to get you treated. That's exactly what's going to happen. You, you've got it right. <laughs> you've got it right. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's remind you all. So we have this secret show, or VIP show, I should say, on Monday. And uh, this is what you missed. Eat, a, eat, eat someone's feces and it won't taste that bad if they've been eating chili. Why, why do I hear... playing him in the background. I think you doubled it over. Did I? I think you did. Did I double? You doubled it. 
Let's see how long he goes on for. He's or something, I don't know. <laughs> no. What the? <laughs> Looks like it should be eating you. <laughs> Son of a I, You doubled it over. Uh, I can, I can it yeah. stomach yeah. stomp. You're gonna export it without it? Yeah, without, yeah, oh, I see what happened. You doubled it over. I'm gonna export the uh, the thing only. Okay, all right, we'll yeah, play yeah. it later for you guys. Before we hit Yamcha, we'll play it. Um, because it's fun. Yeah. Anyway, we are still, is, this would be, in, we're gonna move into worldview now. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Worldview is where we talk about what's happening in the world, specifically with regards to China. And here's a, a rather interesting thing. Okay. Badia Cao, who is a, a dissident artist who lives in Australia. Human China, rights activist. Yeah, China. Chinese yeah. Uh, human rights activist, posted this. Um, and I'll read the tweet out for you. <clears throat> okay. A student from the University of Melbourne posts a clip on Douyin. Now, Douyin is uh, the Chinese version of TikTok. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a different, it's a different thing. It's a different um, algorithm. It's a different algorithm and it's, it's for Chinese uh, speakers, you know, so it's all in Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, bragging, he successfully stopped the uni's inquiry on his plagiarism via accusing tutors as anti-China racists. Um, and I've got to tell you that this, this is a worrying trend that we see, and that is using this language barrier to to the advantage in order to get away with things, all right? Yeah. We see this a lot because the language barrier is a huge problem, okay? This is why the yeah. Chinese government for the longest time gets away with what it gets away with is because they can say very openly in Chinese press and on Chinese websites and on the government websites, things like, we must crush the enemy, the United States. Yeah. They can say that. Kill everyone. And nobody picks up on it because no. they can't read Chinese. And no. then what they put out their English articles and they're like, let's cooperate together for a bright future. Oh, we should have put that website. When you click the <laughs> yeah. English version, yeah. it's like hands shaking yeah. in space. Doves and then if you and click the Chinese one, it's like missiles and, and like communist flags and, and stuff. Yeah. Flags. Yeah. That, that's a great example. Yeah. We've done that in the past. But that's why this guy, for instance, can brag about, you know, getting away with plagiarism because he called his tutors racist and anti-China in yeah. Chinese, blatantly out there in the open, but it doesn't get picked up on because people don't understand what he's saying. That's why it's important like this, like Badio Cao is a, a Chinese human rights activist. He's yeah. Chinese, right? Yeah. So he can point this stuff out and people can now listen because he speaks English too, yeah. right? And the even, you know, even more poignant sometimes is the great translation movement because yes. it's a big team. It's mm -hmm. a big group of Chinese people yeah. that are like, this is not fair that the rest of the world can't see what's actually being said on the Chinese internet, and they translate this stuff. So the next clip is actually the, something they translate. Yeah, so the next clip translated by the Great Translation Movement, same guy, and also shared by Badiul Tsai, said, uh, a student from the University of Melbourne made a video in Chinese saying he's uh, imagining killing all Westerners on campus, or killing all the foreigners, basically. Foreigners um, in that, like native yeah. Australian people that are yeah. not from China. And just by the way, this is something that really irks me, mm -hmm. but it's understandable. But you know, um, even my wife and all Chinese people I know, even when they're living abroad, they still call they still call us foreigners. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I guess it's just a language thing. Yeah, for sure. It is just a language thing, but it's still kind of annoying when you know it's you're being called a foreigner in your own country. Yeah, well, you I mean, are a foreigner. I am a foreigner, yeah. so I can. Yeah, but they call that. me a foreigner. Yeah, they call I'm you like, a foreigner. Eh, I was and born they, in America. Yeah, exactly. And they're the they're the <laughs> foreigners, you know. They're yeah. the ones who just moved here, and they're like, "Hey, you foreigners are." What do I think? Water. Everyone's you know in in the same boat, but a citizen mm. is a citizen. You don't call a citizen a foreigner. No, that seems ridiculous. It's, it's kind of lame. Anyway, um, let's see what he has to say. I think it's kind of important. What does he this this little dumpling have to say over here? Imagination. Yeah, that's, he calls us young guizhi. By the way, young guizhi is a very derogatory term for call foreigners. Us, uh, I don't live in Australia. No, just, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what he's calling. No, when he I say us, I mean foreigners, non like non-Chinese yeah. people. Because that's what you use. It's if a you racist term. Yeah, it's racist and it means anyone that's not Chinese, ethnically. Yeah. 
Um, but it's like a derogatory. Person. Yeah, it's derogatory. It's, it's like not the like N-word. foreigner. It's like yeah, it's like uh, like if you took all the people that are non-Chinese, yeah, and then you called them a slur. That's what, yeah, that's what that's what it is. Young Guizhou. Yeah. It it means like foreign ghost. Yeah, you know, outside whatever ghost. So um, again, it's this language barrier thing. Why would people be posting this kind of thing online? Um, now I don't know if Australia takes this kind of thing seriously, but when you threaten to kill people on campus in America, well, he's, uh, he's imagining it. Doesn't matter. It's, it's called a red flag. It's called a huge <laughs> red flag. If someone imagines shooting up their school or something, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Imagine k- killing their... Imagine dragons, really. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like it should be taken seriously. I feel like this guy is, um, a little bit unstable here. Yeah, definitely warning flag, like big red flags for that. And I'm glad people like Badiao Cao and the Great Translation Movement actually go out there and find this kind of stuff because it needs to be, you know, this this is not in China. This is not for the Chinese law to deal with. This no. is to be dealt with in Australia. Yeah, I, he's I imagining think, killing I mean, if be, uh, and uh, this this is really a thing. If you are at the University of Melbourne, you should probably ask, talk to someone about this. Sure. You should probably be like, hey, at the very least, is this real? What's happening with this? You know, this is, is, yeah, my, maybe is it, my... maybe it's whatever. Is, maybe is it's... my life in danger here? Sure. You know, do well, I have maybe, to worry? And maybe it's all Oops. a big joke and whatever, and he, exactly. he, he takes it back, right? But, like, the Great Translation Movement went out there and found this and uh, yeah. translated it. So This is going around, by the way. It is going around. But I'm just saying, like, you know, this there there are limits to the language yeah. barrier. You could yeah. He could say, like, oh, these foreigners are stupid yeah, yeah, and yeah, whatever, but not like I'm going to go kill him. I'm right. thinking about killing all you guys, you know? Yeah, it's not a nice thing to say. No, no. Anyway. <laughs> let's um, not be mean. And maybe, uh, you know, he could follow the same yeah. plan I'm going on and lose a little weight. Yeah, yeah, he could do that for sure. Yeah. He really could. Um, another thing that's been going around viral on Chinese internet is this clip. Um, so this uh, patriotic student graduates, okay, from the University of Connecticut um, here in the States. And what does he do? When he graduates, <clears throat> he unfurls the Chinese flag. And uh, yeah. people yeah. are like, the, the thing is in China, people are applauding this and saying like, see, our, our China is so powerful all over yeah, the globe yeah. type thing. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I don't think, I mean, it's, I think it's kind of like dumb. I think it's lame. And it's lame. I it's think it's like, like nerd. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just lame. I think it's lame from the point of view, like, what are you trying to say here? Right. You're trying to say that, uh, you know, you have to study in America. Yeah. I mean, like I maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe you shouldn't be here if that's the way you feel. I'm just saying, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I know for a fact that if Freedom you're on speech, yeah, I defend if, his right to do it. If you unfurled an American flag, yeah. you know, at Tsinghua university or something, it'd, at your be, graduation, it'd be silly. You'd it'd be very silly. You'd get that taken away from you'd you. You'd probably go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> or you get would. Deported. I'm just saying like, I'm glad he has the right. I'll I, say this. I'm glad yeah. he has the right to do that here. Sure, that's totally fine. And he's obviously just very patriotic and nationalist, sure. and that's why I'm I'm wondering why somebody who's so nationalist and patriotic would abandon his country, his country in the time of need, where he should be, you know, supporting the local institutions yeah. and giving I mean, his I'll money honest, back into young people do dumb shit all the time. Yeah, yeah maybe he'll look back on this in five years and, and say, so like, man, what I, I, do I really should have studied in China rather. Yeah, yeah. It's like, why did I go to uh, overseas and betray my country like that yeah you know anyway i'm just joking but yeah, it's a joke. you know the point of the show is we show you what's going viral in china yes. and this is going viral people are praising this kid because he's patriotic some people are making fun of him of course but yeah well well uh I'll, I'll chalk it up to you did it's kind of dumb yeah just youth but i i defend your right to do that that's yeah. that's the freedom of speech yeah that's what makes america great yeah yeah for sure anyway why is this got to play out so long? I crickets, don't. Crickets. I actually don't know. Do we have crickets? Oh, not here. No okay. Crickets for this, guys. Huge news for Canadians out there. Not only do you have the Aurora, you know, <laughs> which is a fantastic plane, um, yes. French chef's kiss, but you also have uh, finally a little bit of action going on. Yes. You want to know? You want to know what's happening here? Well, Seamilk's got the story. Okay, so uh, the guy on the right, Michael Chong. Okay, um, he is a uh, what do you call it in Canada? Parliament member, a I politician. Guess. I'll say politician. Yeah, he is a politician, right? Mm. And what happened was he voted on that whole Uyghur thing. Yes. Should, should the Uyghur thing be taken seriously? Yeah. Should basically? it be like classified as a genocide yes. or whatever? Right. All that whole rhetoric around yes, that. Yes. Yeah. 
should we support the Uyghur plight? Basically. So he said, yes, we will support yes, the Uyghur. Yes. Like he voted on that. Yes. In his official capacity. Correct. Now, what happened after that mm -hmm. was allegedly the Chinese government went after his family, because he's half Chinese, right? Yeah, he's half Chinese. Went after his family, not just in China, but specifically in Hong Kong, and threatened them yeah. and tried to get to influence him as a politician in Canada. Yeah. They so think about this. It's one thing if a person gets leaned on by the Chinese government that has people in mainland China, like family members and they're at a protest in America and they hold up a sign sure. that says like end the CCP oppression, right? Mm -hmm. So then they go and arrest their parents in China. I almost expect that at this point. Sure. <laughs> because yeah. how awful the Chinese government is. Mm -hmm. Basically a mafia organization. Yeah. This is a politician with influence in politics and government in a democratic country. Yeah. That was had his family threatened in not just China, in Hong Kong, a supposedly free territory that the Chinese sure. government's not supposed to be able to lean on anyone. Oh, well, they can. They do. Yeah. To influence his decision in voting yeah. in parliament in Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, does the does the influence get any closer than that? Yeah, and I mean, and the genesis of it is it's this uh, Zhao Wei guy yeah. who's also a, a politician. Well, he's a diplomat. Well, yeah, d Not diplomat. A sorry, diplomat. What is the difference? He doesn't make laws. No, okay. He's a diplomat. He represents China. I guess a diplomat is a politician, though, isn't it? He represents China in Toronto. Yeah, he represents China in Toronto. Okay. <laughs> And it was on his behest that this guy's uh, <laughs> having fun there, spilling on yourself. I am a little spill, yeah. spill boy. He's, uh, um, he's the guy who directed this harassment, okay? Yeah. And th the thing is, it's come to light that the, the government in Canada mm. knew about this and told, you know, the CSIS, whatever they call the... the CSIS, yeah. The CSIS, it's yes. like the discount CIA that they have. It's called CSIS. CSIS? FBI? <laughs> well, you know, CSIS the blue light special. <laughs> you know, what would you call it? Don't the less piss off the Canadians just, anymore. I'm, They're very vindictive I'm people. just saying the, le the, you know, the less effective version of whatever. Uh, yeah. Listen, yeah. CSIS. So you right. call it when the moose comes to town. <laughs> no, it's like, anyway. Just kidding, CSIS. I love Canadians. Yeah, yeah we love Canadians. Mm -hmm. We absolutely love Canadians. Yeah. Most of them. Most oh, there's a bunch of real <laughs> rotten ones. Though. I'll tell you what. Wow, there's Whoa! some bad Canadians. There Canada, are some freaking bad, bad Canadians out there. I'm just saying the uh, ones that support uh, China. It, can wow. We, let's give a little clarity to that. Okay, yeah. The vast majority of, can, of CCP shills, so yes. the people that spread propaganda on behalf of China, are Canadians. Are Canadians, yeah. And we're trying to figure out why. Yeah, there's something strange it's going on there. weird. Yeah. Well, they anyway. have big ties to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, wow. Anyway, yeah. we know there's a lot of amazing Canadians. These are just Absolutely, like Alanis Marcet or something. Yeah. She's Canadian? Yeah. Yeah. And Who else? Uh, isn't it ironic? Have yeah, you thought of that. Yeah, it Don't is. You think? Yeah, it's a little too <laughs> ironic. ironic. Yeah, yeah. I really do think. Yeah, um, uh, Jim Carrey. Who's that? Um, who's that? Like that? Um, that rocker or whatever. He's not really a rocker. He's like definitely really... not uh, Adam Levine, right? No, no. Who, who's Adam? What is Levine? that? What is that? Oh, song? yeah. Come on. No, no. He's just oh, okay. a. He's... His name Adam. Le Adam Levine is Maroon Five singer, isn't it? <laughs> Something. Levine. Anyway, what are you saying? Um, what's that guy's name again? He's like plays really crappy music these <laughs> days. But you know, he was kind of a rocker back Rush? in the eighties. No, it, it's like Rush Canadian. That got my first real six string. Did he, did no, 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 who's no, that? No. Brian Bruce something. No, it's something Brian. Brian Adams. Is it Brian Adams? Uh, no, it's that not. Up. Who is that? I got my first. Who's that guy? He's Canadian. Six. <laughs> Brian Adams. I it literally is Brian made Adams. that up. It is Brian <laughs> it's Adams. Like in the yeah. Yeah. of my mind. Yeah. Oh, he, he's, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. If you. If you go a little further back before he started Summer singing nice. all those, like, you know, like, if you really love a woman and all those, like, really annoying really songs. Love uh, a but woman. you go back a little bit. He's a bit of a rocker. I'm yeah. gonna run to you. You know, that I'm kind of stuff. That's kind of cool. Uh, He's Summer Canadian. Of, Summer of Nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah I had cool. my first real sex dream. <laughs> Let's move on. It's anyway, like we just heard lyrics. I had my first real sex stream. <laughs> you know the most misheard lyric, by the way, completely off topic that we always revved hear. Up like a douche. Yes, revved up like a douche. <laughs> like revved a douche. Like like What's that song? Uh, blinded by, by the light. light. Revved up like a douche. <laughs> How do you rev a douche? Well, it turns out don't have motors. It's, it's supposed to be a deuce. A deuce, yeah. which is a kind of like hot rod car. My friend always told me he would correct me because I said revved up like a douche. Because it sounds a, like that. Joke, right? Yeah, and he'd be like, "It's actually revved up like a two-stroke." Oh no, it's not. Yeah, revved up like a two-stroke. Revved up like a two-stroke. No, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Your friend and, is a moron. And then my dad, I believe it was my dad. It was me and my dad or my neighbor had the tape. Yeah. And it had the lyrics in there. Yeah. It was, in fact, deuce. Yeah, it is deuce. Like like a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a deuce is those horrific looking hot rods from like the, you know, they take like a 40s or 50s car and they chop it up and make it look like a Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thing it's with... definitely not revved up like a Deutsch. Like <laughs> anyway. Hitler getting progressively more angry. <laughs> no, dude. No. Anyway, no. so uh, we're saying Canadians again. A couple of good Canadians Can out there. Can we bring this back to yeah. CSIS? Yeah. yeah. Great, great Canadians. Great Canadians. Great, great nation. Great nation. Great people. Great, you're trumping over here. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Except oh, for this guy. CSIS yeah. is Canadians Intelligence. Canada. Dude, we are losing it. <laughs> Canada's Intelligence yeah. Agency. Yes. Which is like a combination of the CIA and the FBI. Right. So they do international stuff and they do domestic stuff. Whereas the CIA, right? Mm-hmm. Apparently, you're an employee of, of according to every all the shills. Yep. Um, I had a theory, by the way. Can I pitch this theory? <laughs> sure, go for it. I was thinking about this because you always get accused of being CIA. Yeah, they always call me CIA. It's just, I'm usually not accused of being CIA. Yeah, yeah. I, I do get accused of being a Fed or like a, a mm-hmm. America sucker. Or yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Nonsense. Yeah. Homophobic slur. He- hedge, hegemony. <laughs> something. A lot of homophobic, homophobic slurs get thrown in my direction. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> something about my yeah. hair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Probably because of the suit, right? Mm-hmm. So they think the CIA wears suits. They walk yeah. around wearing suits. Because I guess it's what you see in the movie. Sure. But if all these people that are accusing you of this and threatening you and saying that yeah. you're a piece of shit and... Uh, Going after my family. They and hope, yeah, and hope yeah. that your YouTube gets canceled mm-hmm. and hope that you lose your job. Yeah. If they actually believe that you're a CIA, wouldn't they be scared to make those threats? I think so. You wouldn't. So doesn't that counter to the narrative? My point being, yeah. they don't actually believe that. They accuse you of this all yeah. the time. Of if being, they actually believe that, they, they wouldn't make that accusation they because they'd be black you bagged. Come, you know what I mean? Come find them in their in their whatever. Yeah, I'd send out know? my operatives to go yeah, black bag them and you know you waterboard out, like, a them dead or something. Drop over, <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever they <laughs> they'd do. be the dead drop off a building. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, yes. Let's uh, let's continue. Anyway, yeah. My point is because we're talking about intelligence. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's your IQ, by the way? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's double digits and less, uh, you know, according to all my detractors. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're mm. a, you're like a mentally disabled <laughs> CIA, CIA <operative>. agent. <laughs> like Who's that. balding. Who's balding. Yeah. Right? You got hair transplants, apparently. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Which isn't true, by you the didn't, way. You didn't. No. I can attest. <laughs> yeah. Can I get back to this? Yes, please. CS CSIS. Yeah, CSIS. Yeah. Like it's a combination of CIA yeah. and FBI, but for Canada, right? Mm-hmm. They uh, have been monitoring this CCP influence in Canada. Yeah. Right. And I guess they've been, you know, following this whole thing because what had happened is this uh, Zhao Wei guy. Yeah. Right. He he's had, the, the dude he's on the, the left. Or, apparently organized this. Right. Yeah. And if you really look into it, it really ties into the whole CCP police stations abroad. Mm. The um, what's it called? The uh, United, United Front. Front yeah. All these operatives that operate on behalf of the Chinese government to mm-hmm. not yeah, only spread their influence, guy. sorry, spread okay. their influence. But also to make sure that people don't talk shit, you know, for lack of better words, talk shit about the Chinese government yeah. and try to undermine its global power. Yes. Right? So uh, CSIS or whatever has been warning about this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, to the government being like, hey, listen, these, these guys are interfering. Because like this happened a while ago. Yeah. Like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, during that whole Uyghur thing. So um, finally it came to light that this guy, this Zhao Wei guy, who's been in, in Canada for decades now, just meddling around you know on <laughs> behalf of the ccp in a bit yeah being a little <laughs> influence doing. like you yeah. know spy meddler uh. um and so it finally came to light and canada decided that they're gonna expel him yep. and he's now persona non grata it's about wow. time so and, and there was a good quote from michael Chong, the guy on the right right mm-hmm. people of eth- uh, this isn't the quote but this is kind of what it means yes yeah, paraphrase yeah, yeah people of ethnic chinese descent are scared of chinese influence this is and he says something like this is exactly what they're scared of yes he's, he's a half chinese guy and with he's family. a family politician he's a politician with family in mm. hong kong he should have diplomatic immunity here he shouldn't be messing with these people right? sure china's literally trying to pull the strings and harass family to instigate slash influence politics in canada that needs to be rooted out yeah that's this is the final straw here guys sure there's probably a lot more going no and it happens at every level of society in canada and the chinese diaspora there are petrified of these 
hor- horrific minders that they have everywhere. I mean, remember yes. like them driving around in fake police cars and stuff and doing all this stuff in Canada too? They really love to intimidate and make sure that everybody toes the party line. It's true. You know? More like Persona non Greta Thunberg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly that. I don't know what that means, yeah. what that joke is, or what the punchline is. <laughs> anyway, the yeah. fact of the matter is persona non grata means you're not welcome here anymore. That's, that's what that And means. he is not welcome in Canada anymore. And good on Canada for finally, for the first time, biting back, you know, at your overlord. You know, like it's a little, Canada's biting like back. a little, yeah, it's like a little puppy, you know, and there's this big, like, looming dragon of an overlord. Yes. And it kind of went, yep, yep. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And the dragon's like, oh, did I feel the tickle? You know? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Pretty sure. What did uh, China respond? Weren't they like... So they expelled, in turn, yes. a, uh, uh, the ambassador. Yeah. Who did nothing. Nothing. Who did Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Nice person. Uh, let, I want to read the official quote from the Chinese government. I thought this was quite okay, nasty and yes, hilarious. Okay, yes. And this really is going to open your eyes. What did they say? It says, during a regular briefing Friday in Beijing, Foreign Affairs Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning, we're trying to find out if she's related to Chairman Mao at all, by the Yeah, way. we'll find she's out. from the same area. Yeah. Anyway, Mao Ning called the allegations in the intelligence report totally nonsense, groundless slander, and smears. Mm. The favorite word is smears. Smear, dude. If you hear smear, smears. yeah. It's a dog whistle. It is. Uh, she said the Chinese ambassador, when summoned to the Canadian uh, foreign ministry, lodged a strong protest. So let's just get this straight. Yeah. Zhao Wei, this yeah. guy, organizes a campaign to harass a politician in the country he's a guest in. Yeah, yeah. A diplomat, yes. too, right? Organizes a protest against yeah, a the local protest, yeah. Canadian citizen mm-hmm. of Chinese descent to Trends harass his family. His family. Yeah. And then the Chinese foreign ministry says, no, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow. Projection. Projection. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Um, and by the way, Canada should know by now with the whole Meng Wanzhou hostage diplomacy thing that there is no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you expel somebody for literally breaking the law in Canada. Now, because he's a diplomat, he just gets expelled. He would probably have gone to jail if he was a Canadian person for doing like international, you know, transnational repression for threats, for, you know, all this stalking, whatever else. He would have yeah. probably gone to jail, right? Yeah. But because he's a diplomat, he just gets sent back home. Yeah. And so what does China do? They're like, oh, well, then we're sending your guy back home. And they just expelled, you know, it's so dumb. Same with the Meng Wanzhou thing. It's yeah. like, oh, you're going to, you know, hold one of our, you know, our person for stealing and being corrupt and avoiding sanctions. Well, then we're just going to go find some high level Canadians, the highest ones we can find in, in the wild and just capture them. You know, that's, that's what they did. Pretty much what? No, that's actually a that's play what, by play. And they were like, we're going to keep using it as pressure for you to release that scam, yeah. you know, queen of ours. Yeah. If you don't release scam queen. We're not releasing your citizens. Your innocent citizens. Yeah, they have exactly. Nothing to do with this. Yeah, and yeah, she's living in a mansion in in Canada and, and all that, and she's yeah. living it up and everything. Oh. But we're just gonna like put our your Canadian citizens through hell here in these like detention centers. Yes. Until you release her. That's preposterous. It's, it is. It is. Where is that thing? It's somewhere here. It's yeah. preposterous. Anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's let's move on from this nonsense. I feel like we've got something more coming. Some people were saying there was ads. I apologize for that. I did not put those in. YouTube has been changing their Oh, are there actually ads during this? Apparently. How is that even possible? We didn't put that in there. So don't blame us, guys. Yeah. No. <laughs> this is China staying classy. Very classy. I don't... Okay. Can I can I say something? Sure. I don't want to be a cancel boy. Nope. I don't want to get involved in this bullshit about who can do what, where, when, how. Sure. Right? I will say this though. It is a it's an interesting move. And I'll let you guys come to your own conclusions. Okay, so let's let's play this clip and we'll explain it, okay? So there's a guy, a Chinese guy, dressed up like an Indian wearing brown. I think here's the important- brown face. Yeah, it is. It's Trudeau over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're just talking of Canada. Okay. And he even got the turban. He even, you got, know? The he even got the turban, yeah. Uh, so guys, take a look here. <laughs> this is the Ministry of Safety. Official Ministry of Safety's, uh, you know, Weibo account. And what do they say? Um, wear a seatbelt in the back seat of the car. You must wear a helmet when riding a motorcycle. It's just police. The yeah, Chinese public, police, public yeah. state. It's like a PSA. It is a PSA. <laughs> so, so there is a viral clip, right? Well, I should say a viral channel, right? This is the viral channel. Mm-hmm. And they their whole shtick is that they dress up 
in a very racist way, like Indians and make yeah. skits, right? Yeah. Now, the reason I said I don't want to get involved in the cancel stuff is you come up with whatever conclusion you want, if that's okay or not. Personally, sure. I have a problem with this from a very different perspective. Mm. I think if you're going to go all in and risk all this stuff and try to be a disgusting racist, mm -hmm. be funny about it because sure. there's no joke there. In sure. all of these skits, there's no joke. It's just dancing around and ripping off songs. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And again, um, I, what I'd like to say is that China, especially the foreign ministry, always jumps on racism. Yes. They jumped on the whole oh, yeah. George Floyd yeah. thing. They keep you know, accusing of America of being a racist society yeah. and all this. Every day, if you read the foreign ministry, it's something about America being yeah. racist. And Slavery culture. You know, and minorities and genociding yeah. Indians and stuff, right? Yeah. Not these kind of Indians. No. Okay. No. But then at the same time, their official accounts are putting out like brown face. I know. I mean, it's, I mean, from that point of view, it's just that's like what I'm saying it's so on. hypocritical. Like whether you think this is acceptable or not is beyond the point. It's the hypocrisy of the government. Yeah. Buckle, you know what I'm saying? Buckle up. It's the law. Yeah. That's what this is. It is. Right? It's basically buckle up. It's the law. Um, anyway, we thought we'd show you some because this this is a little group and I guess they have um social media let's account. read the thing by the way the, the psa said yeah. wear a seatbelt in the backseat yeah. of a car you must wear a helmet when riding a motorcycle yeah i did i already oh read you that. read that okay yeah. sorry i'm sorry so um let's see some of their other fine work i only translated that one by the way oh, oh i wanted to throw this in okay because they're saying wear a helmet right well in china Helmet wears you. No. In China, you got to be careful about which helmet you buy because uh, this is just one little demonstration. A lot of these are these little cheap ones that you buy on the side of the road. And there's oh, been dude. a lot of viral clips right now going yeah. around about a just really handsome, strong Chinese dude. And he's like smashing all the helmets. Yeah. And then like a name they're brand rubbish. one is good. Yeah, they're you know? absolute trash. Most First of all, I got to say that that PSA is needed because in China, most yeah. people don't wear helmets. Yeah. Well... Yeah. They don't, dude. Wear them properly. <laughs> they just don't wear them. And yeah. sometimes you'll see, like, maybe the shifu is wearing a little piss yeah. helmet, but then, like, the kids on the back aren't yeah, wearing yeah, helmets, yeah. and the it's, passengers it's don't. It's un-uniform, I'll say. It's, look, motorcycles are banned in most of the big cities anyway, but yeah. when you get to the rural areas, no one's wearing a helmet, and if they are, it's some garbage that would never protect you. It's not even strapped on. Yes. It's just so that you can say, oh, I was wearing one. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Anyway, this is a construction site where the guy is giving a demonstration of the worker's helmets versus the supervisor's helmet. Yes. Let's take a quick look. So there's the, the worker's helmet, the yellow one. Yeah. yeah. There's the uh, supervisor's helmet. Yeah. He's waving his hand. It broke right through the yellow one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you understand that there's a huge problem with helmet culture in China, but let's yeah. get back to the uh, that's funny a, stuff. That's a, a soft hat. Yeah, a soft hat. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's not a hard hat. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to the, the brown face. Crew. I shouldn't say funny side, the, the hypocritical <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So, again, I want to, like, I, I don't even want to instill an opinion on this because if it was one thing, if, if it was, like, pushing the boundaries, you know, like, a comedian can get away with saying a lot of stuff sure. because it's just a joke, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, jokes are meant for everyone to laugh and you shouldn't be able to, like, erroneously cancel comedians for saying sure. a joke, right? Sure. This isn't funny. There's no joke here. Are you sure it's not, are you sure it's not funny? Let's are find you out. Sure? Are Let's you sure? Let's find out. Let's take a look. So now they're doing another little skit where you've got brown face boy over here. Um, asking, uh, well, you'll just see, but basically asking, do you want these different kinds of foods added to your dish? Yeah. Let's take a quick look. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's... China's been kind of stuck in this joke for a good 10, 15 years now. Yeah, All since right. the Xiaoping Guo, basically. Yeah, Xiaoping Guo was this song called Little Apple. Yeah. And... The whole crux of the joke of the song is that there's a man dressed up like a, a ugly woman, yeah. right? And that just became the thing. And that has been the theme mm -hmm. of viral Chinese humor for a very long time now. Yeah. You have surprisingly ugly man dressed as woman trying to flirt with a man. Yeah. Right. That, that's quite literally like the crux of Chinese humor uh, these days. And he's like saying chickpeas. Yeah, you want to yeah, add yeah, chickpeas? Yeah, and he's like... <laughs> Like, yeah, I want yao it. Jia means I want to add it. Yeah, I like do want to add put it. it in. Yeah, put it in. He's obviously making a dish. Yeah, he's making a dish. <laughs> Curry. Curry, yeah. Yao jia. Yeah, sure. uh, garlic. Go crushed garlic. Crushed garlic, yeah. 
Guess he look he's got a bowl of rice or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he's making yeah. like a like a bon fun dish. Yeah, exactly. Bon fun, mixed rice. Yeah, yeah, just basically mixed rice. He's like, you want cr- crushed garlic? Do you want? You too. Yeah, so I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, what's the joke? Someone just said, I love tractor. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much tractor. It's a tien, yo. Don't be so mean to tractor. I feel like tractor is more att- attractive. Attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tractor is definitely pretty attractive. Well, this, 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 uh, and he's lovely, like, honey. Lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the joke is man dresses as ugly woman. Right? Okay, but uh, okay, let's see where this goes. So, um, okay, so here's another skit from them. This one actually has, I mean, I just watch it. Yeah. So what are, what are they saying? This is like, I want, I want you to be with me. Or yeah. I want you to love me. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> you guys <laughs> just it. look like black bear ghosts or something. Black bear monsters. monsters yeah. Black bear, you know, like. So basically, they're fl- they, they, here's the setup. Yeah. Because there's listeners. Yeah. There's these three brown faced Chinese guys that yeah. have brown faced themselves to look like racist Indian stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they are flirting with the girls. The girls return by saying, No, you look like brown brown bl- sorry, black bear monsters. Black bear monsters. <laughs> yeah. I want to roll down the hill or yeah. whatever. And then yeah, he's yeah. like, Oh, because because I'm in the sun every day. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So that's why I'm so black. Is what say. Yeah, that's why I become black. It's because I'm in the day. Yeah, he know? says to be black isn't weird. Yeah, it's right? not weird. Yeah, Bu-chi-gua. Bu-chi-gua. yeah, it's not weird to be black if you're in the sun all day. Right. See, so he, say, he said when I go home to my hometown, I'm considered white. Yeah. It's so like, why you like why you call me black? Yeah, when I right. go back to my hometown, Hui Lao Jia. So yeah. that, your, your hometown, so it could mean his home country as well. Could be, you know, could be, yeah. That's, you. that's true. Exactly. So it's when like, I go back to my home country, yeah, I'm, I'm considered con- white. I'm considered white. Yeah. yeah. Just pay Just, attention to how handsome. Yeah, I am take a look. Step. Am I handsome or not yeah. handsome? Don't worry about the color of my skin. Yeah. Another thing is they're putting on this awful accent because if you can understand Mandarin, it's it's like when you know it's like a comedic stereotype of an indian yeah well, but it's, but it's not even do you know why because like when you if you do a, a accent like this or whatever there's yeah, like yeah. a there's like a standardized like indian accent that people do when they put on skits yeah right? exactly this isn't that this is what they how they imitate uyghur people yeah when chinese like han chinese people imitate uyghurs when they're speaking mandarin this is what this the is what accent this, yeah, they yeah, use. Yeah, it's so true. it's like incorrect it is even a, as incorrect. a stereotype yeah uh, where does this go? <laughs> oh, and, uh, keep going. He says he has a, my friend here because they're inquiring about each person. Yeah. He says my friend here has a calcium deficiency, so he, he can't stand yeah. straight. <laughs> he says, what about that the little cutie over there? Why is yeah. he so short? Yeah, like, criticizing. Yeah, him. exactly. Right. Don't say he. Don't say he's. Uh, he's short. He, he can run the fastest. He can run the fastest out yeah. of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> That's, this is where we're at we're for Chinese humor these days. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. This is so okay. So it's dumb. Just, it's Again, right. I'm waiting for the punch of the punchline. It was yeah. He ran away like <laughs> Benny Hill or something. Yeah. You know? This yeah. one's this one's the best. For, okay. For like. Uh, to rile people up, I guess. Okay, yeah, so people that will get mad. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. So they're flirting with these girls again, right? By the way, for anyone who's like, "Wow, those chicks are so hot," or something, this is what's called face filters. Yeah, I think people know face. I'm filters. just just saying yeah, that, you like, should put it you you have to point it out that they probably look nothing, and not probably they look nothing like that. Yeah. Okay, you got to understand that. Um, it's so difficult these days because when you see anything any media coming out of china yeah like there's been that viral thing about this very pretty teacher have you seen that they do that all the time yeah but it's this yeah but there's been a very specific one that's been going around internationally where everyone's like look at this beautiful teacher from china and then when you see what she actually looks like it's nothing like that it's all it's all a lie (laughs) it's a lie lie. i tell you it's freaking lie anyway sorry let's continue (laughs) so (laughs) The joke here now yeah. is that, oh, those two girls don't want to go on your motorcycle, but Guga is like an affectionate way of saying like, brother. opa, like, like, yeah, Guga. Oh, like Guga big brother. brother. Yeah, yeah, big brother. But it's also like a, you could flirt by yeah, saying, yeah, oh, yeah. Guga. Yeah, yeah. Gu- so big brother, you can take me. Yeah, nah, they don't want to nah, well. go, but you can take me. Yeah, it's like, take me. Nah, nah, well. <laughs> it's like, 
He doesn't want to take it because you look like a, like a. Hold what? on, go back. I, there's a that that was the uh, funnier phrase back there. Yeah. Okay. He says, "Oh, he goes because he sees this this woman. Yeah, the dude does this woman. He goes, oh, oh my God, like yeah. the, this old black thing. <laughs> this old black person. This yeah. old black person. Yeah, well, the I thing, jumped. Yeah. <laughs> I jumped. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'm scared. I'm so scared. I jumped. Yeah." <laughs> Yeah, so Hojuza is like balut. So you're yeah. saying like you this oh this this, this black thing scared me. Yeah. It, you you look like a, like a balut, like a, a developed egg. Yeah, like a maldan is it called yeah, in It's kinda like a maldan, right? Yeah, it's it's but it's chicken egg, right? And yeah. it's and it's balut is like uh it's a Filipino thing, it's also in China. It's like when a, a chicken is like halfway there or whatever. Yeah, it's busy yeah. developed like the fetus. Yeah. In the egg. She's so ugly. Like, yeah, she looks yeah. like that. Yeah. In China, they cook that and they, you eat it. It's called yeah. maodan. Yeah. Maodan, yeah. 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 So he's saying, cousin, get back on quick. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Like they want to get out of there, obviously. Exactly. They're saying, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take you. And then these girls say, uh, just let me read this quick. Uh, it says, uh, come on, take this girl yeah. into your arms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she ends by saying, "Come on!" Like after the girls say, "Take, come on, take her in your arms," and she says, oh, "Big brother, come on, take me." There's no one at my home. Yeah, exactly. So the, that was the joke. Yeah. So there's this thing going around in China's viral. Yeah. Brown face, no punchlines in any of these. States. And then the uh, like public and then public public uh, police thing is uh, security ministry is like, hey. Yeah, wear your helmet and your seatbelts, and he uses the, they use that as the example. Yeah, I imagine India's probably not going to be too keen on that. But um, I don't know. Any Indian, actually, maybe they can. Any hand, Indians in our audience, do you feel like that? I mean, do you feel honored that you're being <laughs> flat, flattered they, that you're being emulated? Like the that? most racist stuff that China does in an official capacity is usually against India. Yeah, yeah, like they hate India. They do so much. Yeah. It's always and it's always been like that. I don't know why. Well, it's because they go those border conflicts and stuff. Yeah, it's that, but it's also like the the other rival. Right? Remember last time, where it's like the quality of the population is yeah. what counts because I mean, because like... India is overtaking China and the foreign ministry. This like... this freaking water cooler dude, <laughs> and he was like, it's not about the amount, but the quality of the population. That so counts. let me break that down. <laughs> yeah. India overtakes China as, pop as the most populous country in the world. Yeah, and they, they ask the foreign ministry. How do you feel about that? Hey, foreign yeah. minister. Hey, foreign minister. How do you how do you feel about the fact that India has now become more populated than China? It's not about the amount of people; it's about the quality, and that's what he said. It's the quality of the people. It's the quality of the population, not the <laughs> quantity. Like he what? Said that, I mean, you just said that Indian people are low quality. Yeah, that's what he said. I mean, if you're saying that in an official capacity, yeah, and like maybe that's your gut instinct. And of sharing what you say. Indian brown face on an official capacity. Yeah. And by the way, this is the first time Dear Wong did this. Yeah, remember? Remember on yeah. that show? Ugh, anyway, anyway, just uh, had to say that. Anyway, guys, it's time for us to hit Yamcha. This is our Q&A segment where we uh, answer your questions and you question our answers. And, of course, uh, time to chill out a little bit. It's Friday. Get to loosen the tie. Um, and let's, uh, let's hit it. Oh, yes. and for those of you who are not watching now or over the weekend on Monday, you know, we cut the Q&A out of the show. Yes. But what we then do is we allow you to... Um, I don't know where Seamilk disappeared to. Um, on Monday, if you're a patron, if you go over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast, you will be able to watch the full uncut thing. Uh, any tier of patron. And you get access to our Discord server, which is absolutely fantastic and a lot of fun. And you'll see a lot of memes and cool stuff over there. So please go check it out if you have the chance and the means. Um, yo, Seamilk, yeah. I don't suppose you got the, uh, the thing about our Shaban Ho done. Is it on the desktop or yeah, something? it's called 162. It's called 162. It's called 162. Oh, oh, I see it. So actually, before we start the Q&A, let's, let's show you guys what you missed out because it's kind of fun. All right, let's take a look. Probably eat, a, <coughs> eat someone's feces and it won't taste that bad if they've been eating chilies or something. I don't know. <laughs> no. What the? <laughs> yeah. Looks like it should be eating you. <laughs> yeah. Hair, eyes. Buttholes. Intestines, yeah. I can I can stomach, but yeah. stomach, I can't stomach. Yeah, stomach. it's not. But they were all just sitting around eating pig dick. Because the thing I ate was pig vagina. I ate pig dick. 
Maybe. It's like eating <laughs> genitals is just a bad idea. Sea penis. Sea penis. It looks and feels like a penis, right? Yeah. In your hand, and it slithers around and it's moving. Right? It's so it terrible. Venomous. Giant centipede. <laughs> this yeah. is the end of my life. Yeah, absolutely. That is the worst food in the world. That's, yeah, that might be the worst one yet. <laughs> oh, God. It makes me weak. So yeah. How do you get there? How do oh. you go see that? Well, first of all, I got to tell you, everybody, that uh, previous week on Shaban Ho, we did all the best food in China. Yeah. So we're like, this, this is the best stuff yes, that we've yes. ever had, that we've ever tried. And we ranked it in a tier list. Yeah, and so this past Monday, we did the worst food in China that we've yeah. had. And, and we that, explained each dish. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, again, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts. And if you join the Shaban Ho tier, you get access to all of that. Yep. Of course, only if you have the means. But we'd love to see you there. Every Monday is a real treat for us. It's a little VIP show. Very interactive. We get to talk to all of you guys. And it's so much fun. Yeah, it was a really mm. gross episode, but you guys yeah. will have to say the vote clip on that. We have you guys vote on whether you want to see kind of a more dicey clip, and that was... It's pretty bad. It was bad. It's pretty bad. See, so if you want to see what that is, you probably yeah. want to go over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's the best way to see Might lose your appetite, though. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, shall we? Yeah, it's question time. Oh, it is. Yeah. Charles Womack says, in your experience, are the officers in the PLA corrupt? If so, I don't think they could successfully take over Taiwan unless they were told to destroy it completely. 